Individuals are looking to move up. Teams are looking to move on. Welcome to the 2023 Noble Cross and Game Semifinals. We are in Pasadena, California, home of the North America West Semifinals presented by Noble. I'm Sean Woodland with Jamie Hagia. We have Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor, and we are in week number two of semifinals. Last week, we kicked things off in Orlando, Florida, and North America East, and in South Africa with the Africa semifinal. This week, we have three semifinals going on, North America West, South America, and in Oceania, and then we close things out next week with Europe and in Asia. But let's get you caught up with what is going on down in Oceania. First, with the men. Day number two belonged to Jake Douglas, put on an absolute show down there. He won test number three, then followed that up with a win in test four. 310 pound snatch to pick up the 100 points. And then in test five, Douglas with another solid performance, but Jay Crouch would bounce back from a 14th in test four. He takes third and solidifies his hold on the top spot in the overall standings. On the women's side, Ellie Turner needed a big day today and she got it. She finished second in test three and she was second in test four with a 190 pound snatch. Laura Clifton would win with a lift of 195 pounds. Caitlin Van Zyl would struggle a little bit. She finished 10th. Jamie Simmons would take 12th. Then in test five, Ellie Turner, another strong performance. She takes fourth in that test. Jamie Simmons would take sixth, but Caitlin Van Zyl bouncing back. She picks up the test win at 100 points. Your overall standings now with just two tests remaining for the women. Emily DeRoy is looking to work her way inside the top three. And for the men, it's Will Kearney right now in fourth place trying to track down Jake Douglas. For the teams, it's really two teams fighting for that fourth and final spot. PFC CrossFit 30-76 right now, just 10 points up on CrossFit Torian Black. Concept CrossFit con Concept Crew, they need some help if they're going to get in. But here we're getting set for the final day of team competition, and it is moving day for the individuals. But for the teams, Jamie, there's a lot on the line today. That's correct, Sean. There's only 10 qualifying spots for the CrossFit Games for these teams. And for those teams sitting in 9th through 12th, they're only separated by 12 points. So it is going to be a crucial day to see who gets those last two spots to the Games. Here's what happened yesterday, and it was really two teams that owned tests three and four in test number three. Franco's Misfits didn't know what to think about this team coming in because there was not a lot of experience, but they go out and they pick up their second straight test win. Invictus with Joshua Alchama, they would finish in second place. And up to that point, they had yet to finish lower than third. But Franco's Misfits would grab the top spot in the overall standings here. They had, at this point, 297 out of a possible 300 points. Then we get to test number four, and Invictus absolutely smashed this. It was not even close. They would win with 945.69 seconds. Second test win of the competition for them, and still they have yet to finish lower than third, and they are our overall leaders heading into this third and final day of competition. Now, here are your overall standings, and as you mentioned, Jamie, the top 10 teams advancing to the CrossFit Games. You got three teams from Invictus inside the top six. Einhorn CrossFit Ascend, they would be the last team, team in right now. Here are the teams that are looking to work their way into the top 10 over the final two tests, and it's Verdon CrossFit. They are the closest, CrossFit believe, still alive as well, 80-35. They've got an outside shot, as does CrossFit Complex. For more on the team competition, let's bring in Nikki Brazier. Let's see how much experience plays a role into finding out who goes onto the final stage of competition here. What I mean by that is of those top 10 qualifying teams right now, seven of them have at least one individual athlete who has experience at the CrossFit Games. That leaves three teams with four people each would be making their rookie debut out in Madison. So it'll be interesting to see how much that final stage of competition experience plays in when figuring out who exactly will leave the Northwest semifinal and make it to CrossFit Games. Thank you, Nikki. Noble is the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. You can shop now by scanning the QR code on your screen. Here's what's on tap here for Saturday. We I just think that's such a cool shining light 
to see people that have navigated their life and still chosen to prioritize health and fitness in a way that isn't just something that's a passing interest when you're young. I think that's super powerful. I think it's really, really, really cool. And it's really important that um, people can look to that and say, hey, you know what, that could be me. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. I use this analogy all the time. You have, you have a 100 meter dash. It's super compelling and super exciting, but nobody's concerned about the athletes making the distance. The challenge of the test on its face is not what makes it interesting. It is the intensity and the effort and the application that the athletes bring to it that makes it compelling. And I think that should be true for most of the events at the games. You gotta go fast and you gotta look heavy if you want to get yourself into contention for that podium position. And come, it's absolutely necessary at some times to put out a test that's a little bit beyond where the current field is and, and have them reach for that but it shouldn't be all the time. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. The CrossFit Games are the answer to who is the fittest person on earth. And that applies to both the men, the women, age group divisions, teenagers, teams, adaptive athletes. But for any person, the CrossFit Games are the place you find out how fit you are. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they would have. And they showed up the environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person's good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit. It's constantly very functional. It's executed a high intensity. This thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that this community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games.
Stand by. Relax, relax, relax. Sorry, guys. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway as our athletes, male athletes, working on map max reps clean in one minute. It is moving and shaking the ground as our athletes moving fast on these max rep cleans. We are already at 30 seconds. 30 Dominique. seconds. Here go our ladies now, our ladies working on. Our ladies working on max rep cleans, they'll have one minute to do so. Our athletes moving fast as our athletes trying to get to 30, they got about 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds. Once these women finish their max rep cleans, the men will have one more minute of rest. 15 seconds. Let's cheer on our female teammates 10 here. 10 seconds. Minute, less than one more minute of rest. In fact, they got 40 seconds. They will start their second round of cleans, this time a little heavier weight. 295 on the bar. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. All right, here we go. Our second round of max rep cleans. Our fellas working on two ninety five. It's a big boy win as our athletes chip away at 295. Let's cheer on our teams as Kima Blue getting that barbell up. Fortius, nicely done. CrossFit SDA Excellence. Less than 10 seconds to go. 
Get a two minute rest. Here come our second round of cleans for our females. for the women, 235. Here we go, our final set of max effort cleans. 3.15 on the bar. Heavyweight as our athletes getting underneath it. Touch and go for Fortius. Three touch and go.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Heat number two getting underway, and our athletes, our male athletes, working on 275 cleans. The goal, max effort, max reps with that big boy weight. Look at the salty crew go. Same goes for Coda CrossFit. Salty crew go and touch and go. 30 seconds. Salty Hive looking unstoppable. My man is possessed. Less than 10. And now it is time for the ladies. The ladies working on two, excuse me, 195 pounds. After this, the athletes will get two minutes rest. Look at CrossFit Norman, Coda CrossFit Norman getting it done. Less than 30 seconds. The women get two minutes. The men are finishing up their two-minute rests. Our male athletes getting ready to work on 295 pounds. Keep your eyes on Salty High. 30 Lane three. seconds. They went ham in the last round. The crowd getting behind this team as Salty Hive, the men working on 295. CrossFit Riverside. CrossFit Everknox Riverside getting it done. And he's going touch and go again. Good Lord. 30 seconds. 295, touch and go. They get a one minute of work. Solid effort. Three, two, one. 
Last minute of rest for our male athletes. This is it. The final round for heat number two. Our male athletes working on 315. Thirty seconds. working on 315. How many reps can these male athletes on the team side knock out 315? See in two. There goes the quick tag, but all eyes are on the Salty Hive CrossFit. Go and touch and go yet again. This man is insane. Salty Hive has got to be impressed. As their male teammates are stealing the seconds. show. Working on 2.35. Last 40 seconds.
who's going to the CrossFit Games? We will find out at the end of day number three of competition here at the North America West semifinal in Pasadena, California. Ten teams will advance from here to Madison, Wisconsin to compete in the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with two-time CrossFit Games athlete Jamie Hagia and Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Two tests remain, top 10 teams advance. Here's where we stand coming into test number four. There are three Invictus teams inside of the top six. CrossFit Invictus at the top of the leaderboard, 391 out of a possible 400 points. These are the teams looking to work their way inside the top 10, Verdant CrossFit and CrossFit Believe. They are two of the closest to making that happen. Test number four, Finally, Jamie, it's time for the heavy barbell. Yes, bring those on out here. We have some heavy barbells out there. Each men and women pair will get a chance for you have one minute at each of those barbells with a two minute rest. It's gonna jump up 20 pounds per time. What's the recipe for success? We want to cash in early on these lighter barbells in that first set. You need to get as many as you can and it's time for those big lifters. It's their time to shine. Let them get the spotlight here. Here are your 10 teams out on the floor here. And right in the middle, Einhorn CrossFit Ascent. They come in in 11th place overall. So we're looking at Einhorn CrossFit. They're sitting in 11th with tied at 256 points with the undefeated right ahead of them. And also CrossFit Believe is right next to them in 12th place with 250 points. This we are underway. We start with that 275 pound barbell. And right away, you see some of these men going touch and go, power cleans right over the bat, so they're trying to save their legs, not dropping all the way to the bottom of the squat here. 61 reps is the mark to beat, and we saw Salty Hive put that up in the prior heat. The 30 seconds left in this opening window. Lanes five and six on your screen right now. Einhorn cross to descend, they're on the left. Across with Believe is on the right. That's Josh Mattis for Believe. And this is where strategy is going to come into play. Do you save your big lifters? Do you try to get your uh, weaker athlete to get as many reps as they can and save them for the bigger lifts? We'll see how they decide to break these up in these next couple rounds. Well, Marco Coppola on the left from Cross and overtaking team density is just ripping through that 275 pound barbell. Light work at that barbell at a mere 275 pounds. And now the women will take over. They begin at 195 pounds. Now, 195 pounds is not a light barbell for your average CrossFitter in these gyms. This is still a heavy barbell, but these women, some of them are able to go power clean. Some of them are going squat cleans right off the bat, trying to get their second teammate in there. And Shelby Jones opened up for CrossFit Believe in lane six. The left side of your screen, that's overtake team density. They're towards the front here. Randy Stevens on the barbell with less than 30 seconds to go. And you're seeing him go from those touch and go power cleans straight straight into singles. You're going to drop it, get set, pick it back up. It's like Sierra Cole in lane five for Einhorn Cross for the send. And now we will wait for the totals here in round one to see who will take the lead into round two. And we mentioned the score to beat, 61 reps from Salty Hive. This is Jared Burch, Jared, this guy's got four kids. This is 315 pounds on the barbell and he does six reps, touch and go. Absolutely incredible. Oh my God, with the glasses on, his cheer, his crew was cheering for him. He was riding that wave, all the momentum of the stands. Hashtag dad strength. And that helped lead his team to 61 reps. And there is the Salty Hive contingent. They've been making a lot of noise here. And I was able to speak to their owner, and I just asked him what that community and his, how his gym members being here meant to him. And he was in tears. It brought me to tears. He said it just means everything to have them all here cheering and supporting them on this weekend. So it looks like 30 reps in lane six. Cross it, believe, is your top score. In lane five, Einhorn, they got 27. As does Condessa Luther MX down in lane number one and trying to get a total on lane two. Lane two has 29, so overtake team density. They're towards the front. They're on the left side of your screen. 
And we jumped up 20 pounds here at the second barbell. So you'll see these guys catching a little bit lower in their squat. Still trying to, as soon as they feel that fatigue, they get off and get their next teammate in. Overtake team density on the left. Casey Strong just got done. He hands things out to Marco Coppola now at 295 pounds. Josh Mattis is on the right for CrossFit Believe. And then for CrossFit Descending Lane 5, that's Zach Carroll Ramirez. He's in a black shirt and red shorts. And as soon as you drop that, you want to take a breath, get back on that barbell, big drive up with your legs. Remember, as long as you start the lift, before time is called, it will count. Now the women will take over. They move up to 215 pounds. And a 20 pound jump is a big jump from 195. So these women, they want to make sure that they're staying over that barbell, getting a nice high drive, keeping that bar close, fast elbows underneath, and staying that barbell up strong. Shelby Jones is done for Cross and Believe, and that'll bring Lauren Olson to the barbell in the middle of your screen. Left side is overtake team density in lane number two. They were one rep back of Believe for the lead out of round number one. Randy Stevens on the left side for overtake team density. Now, when you miss a rep, you have to come back in it with a, a, an attacking mentality for that next rep you're going to try to hit. She's going to stand up, elbows up, and she gets it. Woo! A lot of buzzer beaters here. Yes. And they will count again as long as you start before time is called. As long as the barbell is moving, that rep will count. So we total of the score share. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier. Yeah, guys, this is the first time that we've seen all the women walking back to their starting off point. In previous heats, we have seen some of the women not able to lift these barbells. And when that happens, those women have to cycle off of the field of play. They cannot help lift the heavier barbells. But all these women have returned back to the starting point. Let's see what they can do in this next round. Top scores now through two rounds. In lane six, Cross would believe they've got 49. In lane two, overtake team density sitting at 47. And in lane one, Condessa Luther MX has 42. And also down in lane nine, Cross with Kima, they have 42. Einhorn Cross with Ascend, they have 43. And now we move up to 315 for the men, final round. The ability to power clean this is just incredible test of strength and to be able to move that large load quickly rep after rep is just absolutely incredible these guys. Well, that's Hayden Weddle on the right side for Believe. On the left side for Overtake Team Density, Casey Strong just finished up. Now here comes Marco Coppola. And he's going to go touch and go. <laughs> touch and go. Power cleans at 315 pounds. Absolutely ridiculous. Josh Mattis went touch and go for a few reps as well on the right side. With 15 seconds to go for Coppola and Mattis, two athletes on your screen. And then for Einhorn Cross to descend, Zach Carroll Ramirez in the black and red. Let's see if we can get this final rep in. So this will count if Coppola hits it. And he will get it. Now the women at 235. And usually in a pair of these, you have one stronger athlete than the other. So if you cannot hit this barbell, you're going to run off and give your teammate as much time as you can. You just see her, Randy Stevens hit that barbell. Shelby Jones is on the right side for Cross of Believe. I believe is one rep behind Salty High right now. Unofficially, they got 60. And you see why you had to get as many reps as you could in those earlier barbells, because these heavy barbells are going to take you a second to catch your breath and get back on it. Good lift on the left for Randy Stevens. <laughs> and now on the right, here comes Lauren Olson trying to get one final rep at 235, and she's going to get pinned by it. We have to wait and see what their total is. But right now, their placard reads 61, which would tie them with Salty Hive. And that goes back down to what happened in round number one for the tie break. Overtake team density had 58. Looks like they're going to finish second in the heat. But 61 refs from 
Cross it, believe. It so here is CrossFit density. We have Randy Stevens making that final lift. She is so excited. She's using all of that momentum from the crowd. And here on this last one from CrossFit, I believe she gets in the bottom of the squat, but isn't quite able to stand that up. All the fatigue throughout this weekend, and especially those other cleans, she knew she almost had that one. Yeah, big performance for CrossFit, believe, coming into this test. Just six points out of a qualifying spot. Final heat up next. Final heat for the teams in test number five. Only one test remains after this. You've got to get yourself within striking distance of a spot within the top 10 here if you want a chance to go into the CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Jamie Hagia. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Here are your overall standings coming into test four. CrossFit Invictus with 391 out of a possible 400 points. Franco's Misfits, they have been impressive as well. Omnia, Kilo 2, and Invictus Unconquerable rounding out the top five. Couldn't be simpler, just lift some heavy weight, Jamie. That's right, a pure strength test. And these men and women are going to have one minute at the first barbell. The rest two minutes, the barbell will go up by 20 pounds each round, so they'll have a total of three minutes at each barbell. You've seen three heats. How does that affect your recipe for success? I'm going to stick with the same. you got to cash in early, get the most reps you can at the lightest barbell in the beginning, and it's time to shine. You're heavy hitters. This is it. Under the bright lights, final day. Let's do this. you got to lift big. Here are the 10 teams that will be on the floor, and they are your 10 teams that came into the day in the top 10 spots in the overall standings. Your overall leaders, CrossFit Invictus, they will be in lane number five, and for more on them, here's Nikki Brazier. We have been talking a lot about the three Invictus teams that are out here on the competition floor this weekend, but what may be even more impressive is the giant community that they have rallying around all three of them. I was able to catch up with some of their coaches yesterday, and they let me know what a large part of their affiliate community these elite teams are, how they help with programming, with coaching, how they take classes with the members, and that's why they're able to really use that foundation of the affiliate to get those elite teams down here onto the competition floor. Thank you, Nikki. Well, why, while we were resetting for this final heat, the score to beat has been updated. Salty Hive actually got 62 reps, so they are still your leaders. 62 reps for Salty Hive out of heat number two is your top mark. First round underway for the men here in heat number four, 275 pounds on the barbell. But we expect to see these guys go touch and go. They're power cleaning. They don't need to drop into the bottom of their squat yet. They're going to go quickly through these and get their next teammate out there and give them as much time as possible. There's Joshua Alchama for Invictus. They have yet to finish lower than third in any test. They've already won two. As soon as you start to slow down, you got to get off because one minute is not a lot of time. More than halfway through this opening round. Now, 20 seconds remain for the men. There is Invictus Sea of Green. Now back to Joshua Alchama in lane five for CrossFit Invictus. Joshua Alchama is staying on the competition floor, but Jorge Fernandez has to get one lift in but before he can. Otherwise, I don't think he will be able to move on to the well, next part. Fern yeah, Fernandez didn't get on the floor. That. So that'll be something to watch. Down in lane nine, Rhino CrossFit Dogs, our leaders right now. That's Christine Middleton at 100.
95 pounds. These women cycling this 195 like it's 95 pounds on that bar. She's catching it nice and high, fast elbows coming through and around, standing all the way up, making each rep count. Dakota Cross with Redemption down in lane number two. They're in the top three right now. So we talked about strategy. Do you put your stronger athlete first and let them get as many reps as they can fresh, or do you save them for that back half and really let them go, let it go, and then get two minutes of rest? Back down to the dogs, the right across the dogs, as Brittany Morella is going to close things out for them. And now let's see who got what. While we're doing that, let's bring in Nikki Brazier. I was able to catch up with Kelly Stone a little bit before the competition started just to ask her about what was going on with her team Omnia and she said that you know she was coming off of that individual training season but with the team they're actually able to train together almost every single day of the week and that has helped so much with their overall dynamic and communication clearly it's been paying off so far for them in the competition. Rhino CrossFit dogs they lead right now with 34 total reps. Down in lane seven, CrossFit Kilo Two's got 30. And in lane number two, Coda CrossFit Redemption also has 30. And just to give you a little bit, uh, East Nashville proven last weekend, they have the world record on this test with 73 total reps, and they had 35 total heading into the second round. Round two underway, men's weight moves up to 295 pounds. Again, the score to beat is 62 reps. And it's the Rhino Cross with Dogs towards the top of your screen. Now, right away, we had talked about putting your stronger athlete first or second. I had talked to Josh Alshama before this, and he had talked about the strategy going into this. But as of now, Jorge Fernandez hasn't lifted a barbell, so he cannot continue and help out Josh in this any of the next two rounds. That's Rafael Duran for the Rhino Cross with Dogs. Now, here comes Ethan Helbig, former individual Cross with Games competitor. Making light wake of the weight in the weight of that second barbell at 295. Makes a quick transition from those power cleans to squat cleans. That's an experienced athlete. That'll close out things for the men. Now the women step up to 215 pounds. Christine Still. Middleton going first. And she is one of the strongest athletes we have in this sport, so we expect big things out of her here and at the next barbell. The Rhino CrossFit Dogs are your leaders. Coda CrossFit Redemption in lane two. They're towards the front as well. And then Franco's Misfits in Kilo two in lane six and seven. Still power cleaning, big drive off the ground, catching nice and high, fast elbows around and standing all the way up. I believe that's Randall Del Rose for Coda Cross at Redemption. She'll drop it, take a second, collect herself, get right back to that barbell. Final seconds here in round two. And that rep will count on the left side for Del Rose. The Rhino Cross the Dogs look to still be your leaders here and we'll wait for the scores to get updated. But Rhino Cross the Dogs through 56 reps right now. And In they... lane seven, CrossFit Kilo 2's got 51. But for RP Strength, the official nutrition coaching platform of the Noble CrossFit Games, you can scan the QR code or visit rpstrength.com slash CrossFit to learn more. And we will reset for round three, but 56 for the Rhino CrossFit Dogs. That is your top score right now. And it looks like it's Omnia that's up there as well. They have 48. And cross at Kilo 2 at 51 as we begin the final round at 315 pounds. 
You see the test record on your screen 73 reps from East Nashville Proven. And last weekend, East Nashville Proven, they had 58 reps going into this round. So they were only two reps behind that. We can see if they can keep up with that pace or possibly beat that. Rafael Duran for Rhino Cross at 315 will get that. And here comes Ethan Helbig. We'll see if he decides to go touch and go. Power cleans. He's going to drop each one. Let's make a quick switch to swap cleans. Dakota Cross it. Redemption. On lane two are putting on a charge here. That's Kevin Schutz, who's going to close things out. And now, Randall Del Rose and Taylor Looney will take over for Coda Cross at Redemption through 57 reps. So they're putting a little pressure right now on the team on the right, the Rhino CrossFit Dogs. Just power cleaning through this 235. That <laughs> That is crazy. So sometimes it's not even about what your one rep max is, but it's also how how, how fast can you move a high percentage or 80, 90 percent. Well, officially the Rhino Crossfit Dogs have taken the lead at 66 reps, but we'll wait for their total. Now they're at 67, and Middleton can't hit that to make it 68. So now she's going to switch over to that squat clean. Take a couple seconds, collect her breath. Big drive up with her legs. Sticking with power cleans. Middleton continuing to work for the Rhino CrossFit Dogs. And that's going to do it. And Rhino CrossFit looking to bring home their first test win of the competition. Unofficially 69 total reps for them. We'll have to see where everybody else wound up. But that looks like it is going to be the best score that we see on the floor for that final heat. The valuable 100 points for Rhino CrossFit as they came in in eighth place overall. So looking to put some more distance between themselves and the cut line. Coda CrossFit didn't, wasn't quite able to get that last rep there at that 235, but over here with the Rhino Dogs, she was able to power clean every single rep at that 235. Very strong showing for their men and their women. A great win for them in this heat. The Rhino CrossFit Dogs. The team of Rafael Duran, Brittany Morella, Ethan Helbig, and Christine Middleton. Eighth place overall, looking to crack the top five, courtesy of that effort. 69 reps for them to add 100 points to their total. And they are with Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. Congratulations, guys. I have to ask, how did this event go for you today versus in practice? Yeah, it went really well today. I think we executed, we had that adrenaline, so we're feeling really good, we're really hyped up. It's great to have the crowd here too to give you that extra lift. Now, Christine, we know that you're one of the strongest competitors in the field, so obviously you made a showing at that barbell. How did it go for you in comparison to training? Amazing, yeah, uh, yeah I couldn't have asked for better reps. I mean, my legs gave out on one of them, but I got about five more reps on the second bar than I did in practice, nice. which is um, awesome. <laughs> so it went great, it went great. You guys have made a great showing so far this weekend. What is the, the team dynamic like for you four? Uh, funny. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> They're my dogs. <laughs> but... Really great. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. 100 points for the Rhino CrossFit dogs as they take test number five that had some extremely impressive individual efforts. We're going to take a break. When we return, individual action continues. Light coverage as the men take on test four and five for the first three heats. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games North America West semifinal is brought to you by Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. Noble the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Wild Health, revolutionizing healthcare, unleashing your athletic potential. And O2, the official sports drink of the Noble CrossFit Games.
CrossFit is long lasting. It's the best way to get healthy and fit. It'll also be the best way to produce the most well-rounded athlete, uh, the most athletic, well-rounded athlete that you can be. Like it'll bring out the best physical version of yourself. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And that's why I compete. Um, and that's why I own the gym. Seeing what you're physically capable of, I think is something that I've always wanted to, wanted to push that limit and push that boundary. And CrossFit gave me the ability to do that. I would tell someone that's intimidated by CrossFit to take the leap of faith and walk through the doors. Athletes you see on TV are the 1%. So you don't have to be physically fit to start. It doesn't matter what other folks are doing. This is about you. This is your fitness journey. It really is infinitely scalable to everyone. It's a gift to your kids for them not to have to take care of you because you can no longer function. And CrossFit will allow you to do that. You're going to feel better coming out of it than you did going into it. Just get inside the door and then we'll take it from there. And when we moved to town, man, we were family rich. It was great, but I had no friends. When I came to Auburn, everyone was friendly, but they all had their people. And so it was tough to find friends. And uh, that's why I came to CrossFit, actually. I believe that CrossFit is a great vehicle that brings people through the door, but fitness is everything. I mean, it's our emotional fitness, our mental fitness. And for a lot of people, I think they walk through the door of Auburn CrossFit for that hour, for that great hour of the day that provides them the release that they need. People at Auburn CrossFit are some of the most surprising parts. I, I didn't anticipate that. Man, we have a 92-year-old a CrossFitter here. Annie is famous. She's the one that inspires the entire box. My name is Annie Holmes. I am gonna be 93 in January. Um, she started CrossFit at 89 and had never really done any type of fitness that I'm aware of. Never in, in any universe did I think my mother would consider going to any kind of a gym. I just fall in love with the, the way my, my body was changing, that I was finding muscles I never had. That's one of the, the things that I think that people undervalue is the importance of we're all going to age, and something's going to be difficult at some point, but things such as CrossFit make those recoveries or those difficult times more bearable because we have laid the groundwork. But in all cases, however people get it done, what matters is they, that they get these ideas in their bodies. They don't just keep it in their heads. They need to put themselves on the hook to do something that is just uncomfortable because when they do that, they discover benefits that you can't get from shopping to deal with your depression. You can only get from challenge. And challenge is this rare gift that increasingly, in a world that worships comfort at every turn, we, we desperately need it. Our kids need it. Our parents need it. I need it. And if I'm not actively looking for uncomfortable things, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drift into comfort at at every turn, and we know where comfort leads us. Comfort leads us to places that we don't want to go. And what, we, what we're all craving is to be alive. It's not just about working out. It's about how do I deal with hard things everywhere in my life? And if I don't practice that, when hard things come, when I don't pick them, I'm not going to be in a very strong position to deal with them.
One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Our Heat One athletes underway. First bit of business, an 800 meter run for the average athlete. Probably take about four minutes or so. These athletes trying to move fast because they have a max snatch for weight waiting for them in the wings. Once that is done or six minutes occurs, we'll get a two minute rest. Then it'll be eight snatches at 185, followed by another 800-meter sprint. It's basically a two-test event, Kiki test four and five. There are barbells already preloaded, seeing some heavy weight waiting in the wings, including 275 from Jacob Marlowe. So it's gonna be real interesting to see We've got these nice placards that we can bump up as they roll through these 200 meters a piece coming up to 800 meters you'll see their judges move that up for us so we can keep track of where everyone is at at these runs this is heat number one test number four and five you've got two scores up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be exciting. It's one of the most exciting of the weekend. But first, they gotta get through 800 meters. Word on the street, the record for this is 310 pounds. We had Guy do it earlier last weekend and 310 at Australia as well. We are two minutes in into a six minute event. These guys at that halfway marker on this run, finding that perfect balance of pushing through the run but saving their strength and ready to rock and roll once they get to that barbell for that max snatch. It looks like we've got a couple of athletes moving in their final 200. Lane number one, Arturo Torres. Who do you have over there, Josh? Couple of judges' hands in the air for Kacker, for Brian Huynh. Once they complete that 800 meters, it is on with these snatches. We've seen a couple semifinals hit 310 pounds. I'm excited to see what we can do here at North America West. Jacob Marlowe with 275 on the bar. Gonna get it real interesting as we approach the three and a half minute marker. Here we go, lane number one. Arturo Torres at a CrossFit Kima. Looks like you've got somebody on your end, Joshy G. That's right, we got Cackert and Wynn. As they chalk it up, taking a big deep breath, but all eyes are on lane five, Jacob Marlowe. That is the heaviest on the floor at Mitch, 275. Mitch McLuhan gonna open up at 235 on platform number two. We're coming up on four minutes. You've got 
Two minutes remaining. Arturo Torres at 245. Brian Wynn with a successful 245. Here comes Marlo, 275 with ease. There you go. Good Lord. I believe he's adding. For Taylor Sturgis. I believe he's going up to 290. 90 seconds. Foss with 255. McClune with 255. Platform number eight. Good on his lift as well. Trying to do that quick math. Jacob Marlowe attempting, I believe, 290 on the bar. Got 275 with ease. He's got about a minute and 10 seconds. All eyes on lane number five as Marlo setting up for 290. One minute. Athletes, you have one minute. Marlo setting up underneath it. Couldn't hold on. Forty-five seconds. Marlo gonna give it another go. Unable to hold on. McLean with 265. Sturgis going for 275. They're trying to help Taylor Sturgis. It rolls back. 30 seconds. Here we go, lane number four. Anton Foss going to try 290. Fifteen seconds. Marlo going up in weight. Ten seconds. 300. <laughs> Marlo, the last second, I believe, got 300. My man is pumped. Talk about a buzzer beater. <laughs> 300. Missing 290, adds 10 pounds, and gets 300 with ease. 90 seconds. Marlo is pumped, getting ready to run through a brick wall here. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. And with that, we had a quick reset. Now our athletes working on eight snatches at 185, followed by another 800-meter sprint. What a way to finish for our athletes here in heat number one, set the stage for an exciting finale tonight. We are working our way back into that run, Assault Runner Pro. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. They are about ready to sprint out 800 meters. Cackard here in lane number nine, the first athlete back to the assault runner. And they are racing to get to 800 meters. Cackard going touch and go for eight reps. As Marlo in test four, snatching 300 pounds to the delight of this audience. 
so exciting here at the North America West Noble CrossFit semifinal. We are one minute in. This test number five has a six minute time cap as well. Keep in mind there are two scores up for grabs here. Two separate tests of fitness with individual tests four and five. We've got those placards moving up. The athletes, 200 meters on their way towards 800 meters here. So it goes one, Cackert. Lane number eight, Brian Wynn in second. Lanes nine and eight, your one and twos. Checking out those feet, looking at that pacing. Everyone is on a pretty quick pace. Win and Cacker now tied for first. Win with a slight lead. Lane number three, Anthony Yim. Excuse me. Lane number three, Taylor Sturgis. Sturgis in third. Hitting that halfway marker. I think we can go ahead and cheer him on. Can't we, Pasadena? We've got a whole separate event happening right here, right now. Brian Wynn in first place. Cacker trying to get it done. Both athletes with less than 200 meters to go. It is going to be a sprint to the finish. Clear the runway. stretch ladies and gentlemen we're about ready to see a finisher as we come up on three minutes in all eyes are on lanes eight and nine it'll be brian win taking first next up charles kecker as he races into the end zone here comes lane number three, Taylor Sturgis, followed by Arturo Torres. Our next athlete, lane at number seven, Stephen Jones, finishing up. these guys in their final hundred. Here we go, lane number four, Anton Foss. Athletes were coming up to four minutes. Farias crossing that finish line, as is Jacob Marlowe. Mitch McClune getting there right before him, and I believe that is all the players. That's a wrap for heat one. Up next, heat two.
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our athletes starting on the air assault runner, 800 meter sprint. We saw the athletes in the last heat hop off of that assault runner in and around the three and a half minute mark. All eyes are on lane at number five, Tudor Magda with 275 preloaded on the barbell. Will he get to 300 like Jacob Marlowe did? Or will any one of these superstar athletes surpass that big weight? We will find out as the clock ticks away and our athletes inch closer and closer towards 800 meters. We saw an exciting showing in the last heat. 300 pounds was hit. Like I said, that world record for test number four is 310 pounds. Audience waiting, patient, waiting patiently to see which athlete is on to the barbell first. Some big weight preloaded on that barbell. Obviously, this run is a bit of a buy-in. Seems to be a bit of a buy-in here. Pacing is important. They want to be able to get to that bar and hit a solid lift. As I look across, we've got Magda, who's going to be opening up at 275. I don't know if you see something bigger than that, Joshy G, but Magda looks like he's going to be opening at 275. As we hit two minutes in, this event does have a six-minute cap. Then they get a two minute break and we go right into individual test number five. Most of these athletes have hit the halfway marker. Their last 400 meters. There it is. A couple of athletes working on their last 200 meters. Lanes 10, 9, and 8. Another hand in the air over in lane number two. That's Parker Foster. And again, definitely the run is important, but the score here is that weight on the barbell. We're three minutes in with three minutes, less than three minutes remaining for test number four. Lionel Franco gonna be the first athlete off of that air assault runner. Along with Adam Dykus, they are inching closer and closer to 800 meters. There goes Leo. Leo. Leo! I in 245 on the barbell. Adam right behind him. All right, here come our athletes making their way to those barbells. Lane number eight, looking to start first, Lionel Franco. Very smooth from Franco. A successful lift at 245. Here comes Tudor. Tudor taking his time. Eye in 275. As Lionel Franco adding another 50 pounds to the barbell. Tudor Magna setting up for 275. Here we go, platform five, blue shirt. 270 good is for Magna. Steve O'Brien gonna be going for 265. Let's see what Magna bumps it up to. Franco going up to 275, looking to tie up Tudor Magda. Foster with 245. Yim going for 225. O'Brien good on 265. Athletes, you're coming up to that final minute. There it is, 60 seconds. 
305 on the bar for Tudor Magda. 305 as he sets up. Tudor standing up. We're coming up on 30 seconds, 30 seconds. He's gotta move if he wants to add more weight. 20 seconds. 280 for Steve O'Brien, 15 seconds. Can he do it? 10 seconds. 325 on the three. Line. Speechless, and this is one of those exceptions. Give it up for Tudor Magda. <laughs> Dang, I can't even believe how loud this crowd just got right now. That was incredible. Like Josh said, shout out to Magda. Woo! We've got one more event though coming up. Fellas, head over to your green starting mats. That is wild. One minute. seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Dang, I'm still buzzing over here from that 325. We'll be talking about that for sure over the next couple of days, over the course of the semifinals and then some. But now these athletes gotta dig into test number five. It is eight snatches and an 800 meter run with a six minute time cap. Magda looking to steal the show here. Magda racing to finish event number five first. Magda, no stranger to the competition floor. He competed in the teen division at the games. That experience and strength coming in handy here on the North America West competition floor. This is heat number two. If you're just joining us, individual test number five. All right, these athletes. Everyone looks like they've completed that first 200 here. Tudor trying to be the first man to finish the run here in heat number two. Already stole the show with that 325 snatch. 
putting all the other athletes in the remaining heats on notice. I keep on looking at that placard like, yep, it was 325. Yes, that happened. And he looked so solid on it as well. Curious to see how much is in the tank there for Tudor Mecca. These athletes are about halfway on that run. Let's go ahead and put our hands together for them, guys. Let's give them a boost. Josh, it looks like over on your end, lane number eight, Leo Franco in the orange shorts. Hoping to come off this runner, Anthony Yim over in my end in lane number three. Let's go, Leo! Franco trying to finish up. He is sprinting to the end zone. Four looks to be double timing. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, Nico Flores. He's followed by lane four, Anthony Yim. Here comes lane number six, Joel Laney. And I'm getting it done here in lane number 10. Followed right behind is lane number five, the man, the myth, the legend, Tudor Magda. Stephen O'Brien comes through. Ooh, foot race right there. It might have gone to Parker Foster. Harley Four racing in. in there. Here comes Evans. Evans crossing that finish line. And I believe that is it for our athletes. Big round of applause and a huge shout out to Franco and Magda. Franco taking test five. Magda taking test four.
Ten seconds. Stand by. Two seventy five seems to be the magic number as one athlete preloaded their barbell with two seventy five. Here we go, heat number three. Our athletes working on this run. Once that is all said and done, they have that snatch at that very heavy weight. How strong can our athletes get? Well, our last heat put up 325. Will we see the same here? As our athletes chipping away at that 800 meter run. Josh mentioned it, Anthony Davis opening up at 275. He's another athlete we've come to expect big things on with the snatch. However, 325 is a tall order that was set in the previous heat as we hit one minute in towards that six minute time cap. Magna with 325, we'll see what the athletes of heat number three have to say about that. Already at the 90-second marker. Most of our athletes in and around the 200-meter mark. Approaching 400 meters. All right, those placards are starting to bump up to that halfway mark. These athletes sticking with their plan as we hit two minutes in, four minutes to go. Like Kiki said, our athletes with 400 meters or less to go. All eyes are on lane number four, Anthony Davis. As he has preloaded 275 on the barbell. A hand is in the air, guys. Let's give these athletes some applause. There you go, Pasadena, helping them out there in the final stretch of this 800 meter run. Judge's hand in the air signaling these athletes have less than 200 meters remaining in their 800 meter run. Crowd waiting patiently to see which athlete is gonna be off of that treadmill. Anthony Davis said no. The big man getting ready for 275. <laughs> Power snatch. 275. Power snatch right there from my man Anthony Davis. He heard Magna put up 325. We'll see what Anthony Davis has to say about it. Anthony Davis made 275 look very easy, which means. Some big boy weight about to be put up onto that barbell. Going for 305, no, 310 maybe? We'll, we'll wait for that placker to move around, but all eyes, platform number four, gray shorts, no shirt. Anthony Davis going for 300. Again. <laughs> he lost Very his hat, but he kept the lift. Anthony Davis, 300. 
athletes. Oh, baby. One minute. One minute. Well, that is a lot of weight being added to that barbell. Travis Bentengood, 45 seconds. Tra Travis Bentengood, excuse me, at 275. Davis going for 330. Take your eyes to platform number four. 30 seconds. Anthony Davis stepping up to 330 pounds. Pasadena, here we go. He's got time, 20 baby. seconds. Benton going for 285. Three, two, one, time! Big round of applause. I believe Anthony got 300, missed 330. So his final score will be 300. Benton closing it out at 285. Ninety seconds. One minute. All athletes to your starting mats. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, eight snatches at 185. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, 185. Touch and go. Making some moves. Kiki, down by your end. We got a couple of finishers here. Already on to the treadmill. Josh G, these athletes running through 800 meters before they can get on that finishing mat. Way that they are working with on the snatches, 185, and now it's 800 meter run. One minute in, five minutes remain here for individual test number five, heat number three. Adam McAdams already at the 200 meter mark. I believe Traven Benton over there in lane number one was the first athlete on the air assault runner. This event, this test number five goes by pretty quickly. Even though they have that six minute cap, these guys are getting it done well beneath it. Davis getting his close up. Davis bumping up. 
So is lane number one, Trayvon Benton. Adam McAdams here in lane number nine, inching closer to that 600 meter mark. These athletes halfway on that run. More than for some of them, will it be Davis? Will it be Benton? Or will another athlete come in hot? A hand in the air for lane number six, Ibarra, followed by Davis. The crowd knows what's coming. Three minutes. Lane number nine, Adam McAdams racing to the end zone. Will he get there first? Just a few meters away. Yes, he will. Adam McAdams, lane number nine, taking first in test five. is so close, so close. Couple more athletes finishing up. Here comes lane number seven. Just a few more feet away. Alessandro trying to get it done and he will off of the treadmill and into the end zone. Heat number three is done. Big round of applause for our Heat three fellas. What a battle we saw. Heat four up next.
Halfway through the back-to-back -back tests of test four and five here on the second day of competition for the individuals at the North America West semifinal from the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and the 2008 fittest man on earth, Jason Khalifa, and Nikki Brazer is down on the competition floor. Individual action kicked off earlier today with test number three, a spin on Linda with the dumbbells on the bench press. Here's how that shook out. Justin Medeiros, he was fourth overall coming in. He would wind up taking 12th place in the test. It would drop him down two spots in the overall standings to sixth place overall. Now Colton Mertens, who had that great finish last night coming off the second place in test number two, 13th overall coming in, he was towards the front. The Chandler Smith, ninth place coming in. He takes second place in the test and moves up to fourth place. But Colton Mertens gets the victory, moves into a qualifying spot. Colton Mertens now sits in seventh place overall. These are the results from test number three. And now the overall standings coming in here to these back-to-back -back challenges. Cole Greasaber is your overall leader by four points over Pat Felder. Nick Matthew was only eight points out of the top spot. And right now, Scott Tetlow would be the last man in. Cole Sager looking for his 10th straight trip to the CrossFit Games. Currently sits in 11th place overall. Test four and five, Tommy. Finally, the people getting what they want to see, some heavy barbells. Yeah, but you, you got to do a little running on the Assault Air Runner. 800 meters first, remaining time, your max snatch. And then we're going to take a quick break and reverse it. Eight snatches this time at 185. And then all out on the Assault Runner for 800 meters. What is the recipe for success here? Well, for the test four, easy at the start, right? We've seen these athletes basically use the run as a warm up so that make sure they're not burnt out for the lift. And on the backside for test five, 200 meters at a time. This 800 meter run, break it up into 200 meter chunks mentally to make sure you're at the right pace. 10 men in this fourth of six heats. Luis Oscar Bora is going to be in lane number five, comes in in 28th place overall. He's got to score some big points here in order to get into striking distance for a spot inside the top nine. And they're, the big number for the day is 300, right? Which of these athletes are going to sniff 300? Luis is definitely one of those guys. So Jason, let's get your thoughts on this. You've been sitting here watching this. How would you approach this first half? Here's, here's what we got to remember, right? These athletes, they need to give themselves enough time on the snatch to get in at least three lifts. They have to. So if they run too easy, they're not going to have enough time on the bar. But if they run too hard, they're going to be exhausted. So the way I would approach it is, you know, 80% effort, more or less, get off, couple quick breaths, Boom, hit your first lift, get a win, get a win, get a win, and then go from there and see how you feel. You, and strategy becomes a major factor here. We have to look at the rest of the heat and see what do you think you can hit to put you in a place. And if you're feeling good, obviously you go for the win. But a lot of guys are hitting big numbers. The score to beat in this test also happens to be the test record. And it came courtesy of Tudor Magda Foss, back three, in heat two, number two. Now, Jacob Marlowe started things off big. He had a 300 pound lift. Then Magda in heat number two, with not a lot of time left, threw 325 pounds on the bar and hit the lift. We'll get you that video here when we have it, but Marlowe started things off. Magda hit 325, and then Anthony Davis missed at a lift that would have beat Magda. But here's Magda's effort at 325. And Anthony Davis would have beat that at 3.30. He power snatched ah. his first two attempts and was not able to stabilize that lift. Looked like he wanted to get another lift in, but just didn't 100%. have time. He tried. He tried. Just wasn't there. That's well, Phil Muscarella in lane two. Next to him in lane one on the left is Greg Gross. And what was, what's been impressive so far is the, the grace under pressure from some of these athletes lifting. You know, Marlo missed 290. And rather than resetting for that lift, threw an extra 10 pounds and hit one at the buzzer. 
and, and Tudor, right? We were sitting here just a second ago, Jason. Didn't think he would have enough time, but you know, he loaded up, no hesitation. Dude, I could not believe he got that lift because his previous lift, it looked okay, but it didn't look great. And then boom, he adds more and he gets that next lift. That was awesome. And if you're watching these athletes right now, you know, what they're thinking about is staying calm, keeping the arms relaxed, keeping their shoulders kind of relaxed in those positions. Because the last thing you want is to be all tensed up, jump off and go hit up a, a one RM snatch. And, and to be fair, by the time they actually make that first lift, which should be something you can hit, no doubt, it's been five, six, seven minutes, maybe even more since you hit a lift in the back and came out for the staging area. Uh, at so, least. Sorry, Jason, Phil Muscarello's judge's hand was first in the air. So he's a leader right now on this run down at the other end. It's like Matt Poolin might be second. Well, I can't, uh, you know, bring up how important that is to note. For anybody watching this at home, you're watching these athletes are coming off, uh, you know, the runner, and then they're going to win the snatch. But what you don't know is that they probably haven't touched a barbell for at least, at least 12 minutes, at least, maybe more. Crazy. And, and that's why, you you know, we talked to Matt Fraser on the broadcast last week, and he said this first one should be something you could hit in the back 100% of the time, no questions asked. Start to grease that groove for the heavier weights. Yeah. You know, getting ready for regionals one year, I knew that they would line you up with like 20 minutes waiting before your first lift. And so what I would do is I'd warm up, I'd hit my lift, I'd go inside my house, kind of talk to my kids, do whatever, come out and just try and hit it cold. Wow. Phil Muscarella and Matt Poulin were the first two men off of the run and Muscarella is going to be first up at 235. Strong lift. Right now it looks like the, the biggest weight I can see out there is 275. Luis Oscar Mora. First attempt for him. Look, Oh, that's pretty rare. You don't see that that often coming over the top like that. And interestingly enough, this is something that happened to Luis last year at semifinals with that lifting complex, he opened really big, missed his first lift, but was able to dial it in and settle in for a good lift. And there's 275 there for Luis Oscar Mora. We have one minute, 45 seconds left before we hit the time cap. Such Lu a tight timeline. Luis is one of those athletes that you're just kind of waiting for him to finally break through. He joined the Proven camp. He's been training with them out in Nashville. He was a former team games athlete and just missed qualifying in 2020. He was the national champ of Mexico, would have gone that year. But obviously, the uh, invites got adjusted, you know, due to this change in season. But he, he's an athlete that has a ton of potential, and all the proven uh, athletes and coaches out there believe in him. Here's Phil Muscarella now at 260. Wow, he's just power snatching those. That's just straight up willpower right there. Luis Oscar Mora has got 290 on the bar now. Here we go. Strong lift. And still has a minute left. Yeah, he's that probably gonna go for 305, right? We'll tie him for fourth place right now in this test. And he's gotta score points. He's 28th overall coming into test number four. And this is where it helps to you know have a little situational awareness, knowing what happened in the previous heats, maybe having your coaches, your support system kind of letting you know what's on the board. That's right, that's right. You can see a few of the uh, athletes are kind of looking over at coaches, trying to get better understandings of numbers, because that's exactly what it is. It comes down to it. It could be five pound difference. So Matt Poulin missed his attempt, trying to see what the weight was on the bar there. As Luis Oscar Mora is getting his barbell set up. Here's Phil Muscarella at 275. This will be his third lift. Losing that forward. Now less than 20 seconds to go. Mora going for looks like 300. 300 pounds. Yeah. Luis is about to go for it here. So 300 for Mora, 275. It's good for Mora. Ah, is going to hit that. So Luis Oscar Mora is going to settle for 290. Still a great result at this point. Ties him for fourth place in the test. You know, it's interesting to watch with Philip. You know, I don't know if you noticed that, but on his original lifts, he's power snatching. On that final one, he had to get deeper under it. Who knows? Maybe if he had full snatch from the beginning, he would have warmed up those positions better. But something to think about for next time for him. So 290, good for Luis Oscar Mora. And now we reset for test five. And while we do that, let's check in with Nikki Brazer. Hey guys, I was talking to Brent Fikowski before this event started and he thought that it was particularly interesting that the fractional plates here for the snatch portion of the event start at two and a half pounds versus a smaller option like a half pound or a one pound that we oftentimes see. And he said that it oftentimes is a lot easier to stick to your game plan if the guys on the left and right of you aren't throwing a little half pound plate, a little one pound plate on there because you, then you play that dangerous game of what's one more pound, right? So they were particularly excited to be able to go into this knowing that only 
five pound increments we're going to separate each of the lifts out here helps them stick to a game plan. That's a really good point because a lot of times you see guys hiding that change plate on the oh, inside yeah. and you have no idea it's there. Well, I've been in a situation before where immediately when I got on the bar, I just put one pounders right on the inside of the collar and you just kind of even forget they're there. And Noah Olson and Haley Adams here. Olson, who punched his ticket to the CrossFit Games last year. For the 10th consecutive year. Or last week, I should year, say, for the 10th yeah. straight time. And we're just going to see if Cole Sager can do that. He'll be coming up here in the, one of the final two heats. Now this right here, this is a tough test right here. You're coming off a big snatch. Everybody's going to do these unbroken, but it's that run. And especially, we were talking about this earlier, for anybody watching who's thinking 800 meters on this is the same as on the track, it's not. It's a big difference. First time I ever ran on one of those runners, I felt like I was running in mud. Oh my gosh. Wow. So eight reps here at 185, then they'll get on the air runner and crank out 800 meters. And Luis Oscar Mora looks to be in the lead here. This is his yeah. final rep. He's the got Golden the Gold Bomb is done as well. Here comes Muscarella in lane two and Great Gross right behind him. So those are your top four men getting to this portion of the test. Brian Wynn out of heat one. He's got your top time at 309.03 seconds. You know, Sean, there's no other better way to put it. These guys are just going to have to go to the pain cave right now. I mean, this is tough. This is as special as last, like two, 300 meters. You can see how fatigued their legs get when they're just crossing the line and falling on the ground. Well, to your point of having to go, I mean, you know, all these men, if they want to have a shot at getting inside the top nine, have got to pick up some points here in test four and five to get themselves into position to make a jump tomorrow. That's I right. I like the posture of Luis here, looking very comfortable on the runner. You know, I mentioned breaking it up in 200 meter increments, right? You know, you get on that runner, you want to get that, that track spinning a little bit, get into a good stride length. That middle 400, kind of find your rhythm and stick to it, knowing you're going to empty the tank on the final two. And for Luis, being comfortable, not seeing that posture break, look, not looking like he's overreaching is a good sign. No, he looks good. He looks comfortable for sure. But there's no doubt they're putting in the work right now. And you, you can contrast, look at the posture on either side of him. You know, the, the two athletes to his right and wow. left, just a different posture. You see their, the yeah. rotation of their trunk a little bit, really trying to dig deep. And we're not even halfway through this run. You can see the difference in form and, and, and really the per difference in performance as a result. <laughs> That's Daniel Coots just you talk about going to the pain cave. That's looks He's, where he well, is right now. Well, I mean, because to be fair to these guys, right? They just ran 800. They hit a heavy snatch. Then they come back and it's all posterior chain, all pulling hamstrings, glutes. And then they come on here and basically to get that thing going, that's all it is too, man. Phil Muscarella has a judge's hand in the air and then down in lane 10. I think Isaiah Vidal's judge's hand is in the air now in lane number seven. Andrew Sturens. Or make that lane eight. Justin Dewing's hand, judge's hand in the air. You see Matt Poulin there, a solid runner overall. The, the, the heavy snatch wasn't going to be his game, but this back half is definitely good for him. And now you can see the speed starting to pick up here as these athletes crank yep. away on their final couple hundred meters. Wow. Matt Poulin will be the first man off behind what? Luis Oscar Mora. That is going to be big for Mora. It looked like Poulin had him, but Mora was able to get off just ahead of him. So Luis Oscar Mora right now, he's still not going to have the top time, but 313.03 seconds for him will be third in the test with two heats remaining. And now here comes Roland Goldbaum. It was Matt Poulin right after him by six tenths of a second. Isaiah Vidal will finish third, followed by Muscarella, Dewing, Coots, Gross, Goldbaum, and then Sturens. That's what I was talking about right there, man. These guys just <laughs> laying it all on the line right now. That was a great performance. But Luis Oscar Mora, who's looking to move up the overall leaderboard 
does himself some favors, but he'll have to wait to see if his results will stick with two more heats remaining. One more look at the finisher. There's Mora getting off and pulling right behind him. And he's the first athlete that we've seen through four heats so far that had the top lift and then was able to back it up with the top performance, at least for his heat on the second part as well. So a nice one-two punch for Luis Oscar Mora. That's definitely, I was going to bring up the exact same thing, to be able to watch that, that blend of that strength and that conditioning. That's exactly what we're talking about here. These tests are designed to get to the right people to the CrossFit Games. This is a great example of bridging those gaps between that strength and that condition, because they ran a mile, mm -hmm. right? They, within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Before he's down to remain, quick break. We'll be back with more from Pasadena. Four heats down, two remain here in these back-to-back -back tests for the individual men on their second day of competition from the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and the 2008 Fittest Man on Earth, Jason Kalipa. And Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Overall standings coming in to these back-to-back -back tests. Cole Greasaver is your overall leader, but only by four points over Patrick Belder. Nick Matthew was only eight points out of first. Chandler Smith and Brent Fakowski, who started the day in the overall lead, rounding out the top five. Cole Sager comes in in 11th place overall with 206 points. He's trying to qualify for his 10th straight CrossFit Games. He needs to get inside the top nine in order to make that happen. Back-to-back -back challenges here. 200 points on the line, Tommy. And Nothing like rolling out the heavy barbells. It's bringing the people to their feet. Oh, yeah, just with a little 800 meters on the assault runner sprinkled in. Yeah, a nice little warm-up for some of these athletes. But after they max out, 
They're going to reset eight snatches at 185 and then all out for 800 meters on the assault runner to get to the finish line. You've watched four heats. Are you adding or changing anything about your recipe for success? Well, I love it easy at the start, but just enough, as Jason said in the previous heat, to give yourself about three attempts at least on the max snatch. And then in that back half, 200 meters at a time. There's a reason why they split it up on this little score tally card they have on the floor. Break it up mentally into different sections to know how to pace. Here are the lane assignments for this fifth of six heats. Cole Sager will be in lane seven. We'll keep an eye on him, but Matt Brady down in lane number 10. He's been sliding down the overall standings after finishing ninth in test one, looking to rebound here. Yeah, one of the athletes that, you know, 300 is the number, maybe look at 290-ish to 300 as an opportunity for him to move up on the leaderboard overall. I'm excited for this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting towards those top heats. We're going to start seeing some additional lifts coming. I want to see how Matthew Green does. Oh, our, yeah. Our jujitsu guy here. Well, unfortunately, Matthew Green withdrew. What? Oh, He's, no. He is not on the not on the floor. He was supposed to be out there in lane number nine. You can see his name placard there at the top is blank. Oh. This is going to be good. With Colton, I wonder how this first, the second run for Colton, I think, might be challenging for some of these guys with longer legs, taller, better runners, potentially. But we'll see how it goes. He had a great day yesterday. Hell of a day. The score to beat is a test record. Tudor Magda at 325 pounds in heat number two. Colton Merton's opening, his opening weight for him right now listed is 245. So if he's able to play it correctly, maybe get to 275, 280, that could be enough to keep him in the game. And this is what's, this is what's amazing, right? Sna Max Snatch first showed up in the CrossFit Games 2009, I believe. Mr. Khalifa to my left finished second with a lift of 225. Hell yeah. J just to show you, the <laughs> show you the growth, right? The lowest listed number for the opener here is 225. Just a crazy leaps and bounds that we've seen. And, you know, obviously, Jason, you've been a big part of that. Dude, it's so funny. Remembering back to 2009, you're absolutely right. Mo Kelsey, do you remember him? Yep. He took the win, and I PR'd my Snatch 225 that day. Uh, Mike Bird, you're... Uh, Mike Berger was there too. Teach me. Nothing like getting some uh, some coaching mid mid CrossFit games. Oh, of course. I was back in the day. You don't get that anymore. Cole Sager's down in lane number seven. Cole is only nine points out of ninth place, and he's coming off his best finish so far of the competition, a sixth place in test number three earlier today, that moved him from 14th to 11th. And you. <laughs> This is what this guy does. He makes things interesting, and then he's got to have some big performance in the, in the final test, and, and he comes up, and he makes it to the games. You know, it, Cole's probably thinking to himself, got him right where I want him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm right on the outside of the cut line. You know, this time it's only single digits? Come on, I got that. We saw, we saw Cole make up 25-plus and 30-point-plus comebacks at the West back in the day. You go 2015, 2016 when he had event wins to make it happen. And obviously this would be another opportunity for him to match the guy on, on your left, Noah Olsen, for 10 straight. Cole Sager won the spirit of the games in 2017. And remember, he was, speaking of comebacks, he was dead last after two events in 2016 and came all the way back to finish fifth. That was the best finish wow. of his career at the CrossFit wow. Games. Wow, yep. Can never count Cole Sager out. And I think it's important, right, if him and Noah both do it, both Spirit of the Games winners and also both 10 straight consecutive qualifications. And then next week, we have Jorben Carl Gubinson going for the same mark. So lane number one is Will Bennett. And his judge's hand was in the air first. Halfway through the six-minute window. And everybody looks smooth, man. I'm excited to watch these guys jump off and see what happens. Look at that. Nice and relaxed, good positions, just ready. Cole looks great. And Bennett is off, as is Jack Rosema. There's Cole Sager. He's just about done. It looks like the heaviest barbell out there. 255, is Two, it? 255, I yep. think, from Will Bennett. Now, Rosema's going to hit his opening lift at 235. So Bennett at 255 right now, the heaviest weight. Season's got like two minutes from now. Not much time. Wow, that, that is was a good. strong snatch. 
Cole Sager stepping up to 245. Yep, nice snatch, Cole. Let's go. And Justin Rose Justin making Rose, 225. Nice. And Jeremiah Bailey trying to see what the weight is for him. I believe that was 225. Jason, what's going through your mind out on the floor when you know you have a tight time window and you line up that first one, and you just thread it, dude? You know what, man? When you hit it, if, oh, I mean, you're feeling you're on you're on cloud nine because you don't know exactly what it's going to feel like in competition coming off an 800 meter run. So when you hit it and it hits right, you get fired up, man. You know, but so, if you but if you hit it and it doesn't hit right, it could really <laughs> affect you mentally. Colton Merton's jumping up to 265. Will Bennett has 285. Okay. On the bar. okay. Maximilian Krieg is at 245. Nice snap. Burns will hit wow. 265. Nice snatch. Colton just had a beautiful snatch. You see that one? That was great. I mean, Jack Rosam has got 305 on the bar. We have about oh. 20 seconds to go now. Cole Sager is going for 270. Come on, Cole. Sager yeah. hits that. Yeah. And here comes Rosema at 305. Five, and won't be able to make it. Rafael Sanson got 245 into the buzzer. And that was huge because he, he hit it a couple times before, but stepped out of his box, so he got the no rep, so he had to reset in short order. Will Bennett and Jack Rosema right now listed as the two heaviest lifts at 285. Mertens was able to get 275. That's a solid lift. One more look at Will Bennett's lift at 285 as he and Rosema had the two best lifts. Will, Will with a really narrow hand position he yeah, threw on that, that snatch. Here's Mertens at 275. Strong lift, too. And you can see Cole Sager in the background there. That was his lift at 270. And that will lead us into test five. Eight snatches at 185. And then we're hopping back on the air runner. And, and remember, the tie break for these one-two combo is the other event. So Colton right now, his lift is good enough for tied for 10th in, the, in test four. He's going to have to outrun the guys on this test five to win the tiebreaker. Got a little bit of a wave going on right now here. There's Rafael Sanson in, in lane five, someone you know very well, Tommy. Yeah, he's just up the road from me in California, uh, native of Soledad. He's actually a, a track athlete in high school. He's on the board for all-time records in three different sprint events for Soledad High School. His best event was the 400. So, you know, had a tough go at the snatch. Uh, the max just a, a second ago, he could bounce back in this one. Brian Wynn from the opening heat still has the top time at 309.03 seconds. That's so fast. That's so fast. I mean, you hit your snatches and you still finish in a, you know, that's like a five minute mile pace we're talking oh, yeah. about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. On a, on a runner. You know, it's interesting, Tommy, back in the day, many people would clean and jerk or clean with the belt on, but they wouldn't snatch. Now you're seeing more and more athletes not at these loads, but at the heavy loads, wearing a belt to snatch with. Bennett and Rosema, your first two to the air runner, followed by just about everybody else. But Rafael Sanson is still out there. He's got one rep to go. He had a missed lift on the initial set, so I think that set him back a bunch. That is, especially for this test, when we're seeing four to five athletes fit within a one to two seconds on the leaderboard overall, that could be... Heartbreaking. Yeah, but look at his stride, dude. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can tell some of some of my fellow long-legged athletes. They got the yeah. big stride there. Really know how to open it up. Get those getaway sticks moving. Yeah. Will Bennett on the left and Jack Rosema on the right were your first two men to the 800-meter portion of this test. Maximilian Krieg in lane number three. Keep an eye on him. 
because he did very well back in test number one on this implement. This is this is a this heat. They have a lot of pressure on themselves, right? You're talking about events, what three, four, and five today. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're not making moves at that leaderboard right now, all these guys are running. They know exactly what's at stake. If they want to make that top nine spot, they're gonna have to really leave it all out there. That's why you see them all just laying down. I saw Colton Mertens on the right. He's looking over it. Yep. You can see him doing a little screen peeking here. You know, that's the thing about CrossFit, though. Taller athletes, shorter athletes, there's advantages, disadvantages, height, weight. You know, all that kind of stuff, it plays in. You're just looking for the overall fittest at the end of the weekend. Well, that's what makes it more impressive sometimes, is the athletes that transcend that, right? Yep. You know who did it better than many? Chris Spieler. That's why he was, like, the, the original people's champ, right? Yep. Had these Herculean efforts that defied what you thought you would see just from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maximilian Kriegs, judge's hand is in the air first, followed by Rosema, and now Will Bennett. And Cole Sager's judge's hand is in the air as well. Now Justin Rhodes, far into the floor, Matt Brady. He's starting to finish him with a hand in the air for Colt Mertens. Raphael Sanson, all judges' hands in the air here. Rosema is within 100 meters. Kriegs within 100 meters. What? Kriegs going to get across, and he might wow. set the time to beat. Wow. And he does. 307.56. That's a new top mark. Here comes Rosema and Bennett at the same time. Rosema's going to win that race. Cole Sager looking to be the next man off. He is done. Matt Brady got in ahead of him. Sager is next, followed by Justin Rhodes. Come on, Colton. Come on, Colton. Colton Mertens oh, and Sands oh, in a race. Shoot. I think Colton's going to get him. Man. Mertens, courtesy of that slide, is four tenths of a second faster than Sanson. The event's not over till he cross the line, you know? Now like Jeremiah Bailey will trot across the finish. And that will do it for Heat 5, and we have a new score to beat. Maximilian Krieg, 307.56 seconds. Look how close it was between Rosema and Bennett. Matt wow. Brady will take fourth, and Cole Sager finishes in fifth. One more look at the close finish here. Waiting to see that first hand go down and release the athlete, but Maximilian Krieg, awesome performance, setting the time to beat. Really from the first heat from Brian Wynn, 309, first athlete to go underneath that. And then Colton Mertens for an athlete fighting for his life on the bubble. That's the effort you want to see. Sometimes it comes down to one, two points in the final leaderboard. That's a placing right there. That could be the difference. So test four results, it was Rosema and Bennett at 285 tying. Tudor Magnus still has a top lift at 325. Matt Brady, Cole Sager, and Colton Mertens coming up big at 275 pounds. So one heat remains here in these back-to-back -back tests. We'll have it for you when we return.
one final heat remains here in these back to back tests and we have already had a ton of excitement here on the second day of competition for the individuals at the North America West semifinal. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and 2008 fittest man on earth Jason Kalipa. We got Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. Overall standings coming in. Top nine men will advance to the CrossFit Games and it's Scott Tetlow trying to hold off Sam Quatt. Only a point separates the two of them. Back-to-back -back tests here and we've seen some great moments and that happens anytime you roll out the heavy barbells. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to run 800 meters on this assault, assault air runner, then max out your snatch. We've seen some heavy weights go up, but then that's not the only thing you gotta do. You gotta reset, lower the weight on the snatch, and then hit it hard on an 800 meter run to the finish. A little two-parter with 200 points up for grabs. What are you cooking up for the recipe for success? You know, easy at the start. I still think hold strong. Make sure you get about three lifts a minimum and then 200 meters at a time. You know, you wanna start strong, have a solid pace through the middle and really empty the tank on that last 200 as well. Fuck. 10 men on the floor coming in are towards the top of the overall standings. Your overall leader, Cole Greasehaber, will be in lane number six. Lane number one is Chandler Smith. Right now, fourth place overall. He's got back-to-back -back finishes inside the top six. And he's got a 305 listed snatch. He's one of the few guys that can break that 300 barrier regularly in competition. He's always got the good vibe, too. Brent Fukowski is in lane at number five. Fukowski, fifth overall. He was your overall leader after day number one. And Fukowski, for, as far as lifts are concerned, this might be the best one for him competition-wise. You think back to 2017, he was one of the few athletes that broke 300 in competition at the games. This is one of the lifts that goes well for him. And Pat Velder will be in lane at number eight. For more on him, here's Nikki Brazier. I talked to Pat before this event started, and he said he's been feeling more confident lately with his snatches, but also he does have a good understanding of his strength in comparison to the rest of the field here. So he does plan to capitalize on his strength as a runner, hopefully hit four lifts confidently and get out. We haven't even started this test, and more or less the entire crowd was on their feet. Now, the rendition of Sweet Caroline before this heat started had something to do with that, but... I mean, you put an all-time karaoke song <laughs> yeah. on the speakers, it's going to get it popping here. Yeah, the vibe in here is, is phenomenal right now. I mean, you got the wave going, you got the old-school beats, it's great. The score to beat is still 325 pounds. That's also a test record. It was Tudor Magda who did that in heat number two and did not have a lot of time between this lift and his last one. No, he hit 305 and we thought, nah, that might be it. He made, I don't think he's going to have enough time. He reset quick, got the bar off just at the buzz buzzer. Remember, the lift just has to start before the time runs out for it to count. That was one of the most impressive things I've seen in a while because he had like, I want to say he had like 30 seconds when he finished his other lift to change the weights and get on the bar and hit a huge lift like that. So shout out to him. That was awesome. There's Brent Fikowski who started this competition with a win and then he finished fifth in test two. He was 26 in test three. That's what knocked him out of the overall lead, moved him from first down to fifth, but still safely inside the top nine. And look at his posture. He's got 260 on the on the bar, but he is moving nice and steady. He doesn't have any sense of urgency. Moving. Yeah, it looks like he's just coasting. Yeah. <laughs> But if, if there's one athlete in the field you have to trust their, their knowledge of themselves in terms of pacing, Brent's got to be one of them. Well, Cole Greasehaber is the man right next to him on the right side. And he is your overall leader after a fifth place finish in test three. Now, there's Justin Medeiros. I mean, Justin's going. He's going pretty fast right now. I wouldn't, I mean, look at the stride. It's quick. So he's finished 6th, 10th, and 12th. And when you look at all the athletes inside the top 10, he only has six spots between his best and worst finish. That's the best out of anybody. And that's the MO for Justin, right? He may not necessarily win events, but the delta between his best and worst finishes is so low that he's always in the top 10, and he will win out in the long run. May not help him here, but at the games, it certainly does. And, and for him, more importantly, in an event or tests like this, Execution is something he excels at, so he's going to have multiple lifts. He typically hits all of his lifts in competition and usually is able to make up ground there. Now, you know what's interesting? 
I, I imagine most of these guys are going to get off, throw on a belt, and then get after it. You got Vellner, I think he has his belt on already. We'll see how quickly he goes and attacks the bar and gets ready for it. Well, and speaking of consistency, Cole Greasehaber, his best finish, third worst 11th. And, and Cole, we got to see, you know, glimpses of this at Wadapalooza earlier in the season when he's trying to get confidence and familiarity at the top of the sport after breaking through last year. And it just seems like every time we see him in competition now, he's shown some improvement and seems more comfortable hanging with the top dogs. He's in the final 100 meters of his 800 meter run, as is Velner. So Velner and Griesaver look to be the first two men off of the treadmill here. Now Medeiros is inside his last 100 meters as well. Chandler Smith far into the floor. He's almost done. Chandler looks smooth though, man. He looks calm. He looks collected. He looks like he's visualizing what he wants to get done when he gets off this runner. Now Griesaver is finished. Velner is finished. And Sam Platt. Right. Cole's about to hit what? 245? Yep. Chandler Smith walking up to his bar. Cole Greasehaber hits nice 245. Lift. Chandler Smith hit his opening lift. Velner's good at 255. Justin Madera's at 255. So Pat Velner deciding to go with the power snatch technique. We'll see how that plays out as he gets heavier loads. Greasehaber going up to 265. Nick Matthew hit 245. Chandler Smith is loading. 275 on the bar. John Wood just missed. Fakowski's good at 260. A grease saber is getting set for his second lift. Medeiros looks like he's jumping up to 275. Looks like uh, Fakowski is as well. 275. Sam Quant just hit his lift. Not sure what the number was on that, but here's Medeiros at 275. Oh, and a miss for Medeiros Justin Medeiros. Medeiros. Chandler Smith is good. Chandler Smith just hit 275. 275. Velner's good at 275. That's a huge lift for him. Fakowski stepping up to 280 as Medeiros behind wow. him is going to make another run at 275. Fakowski's good. Medeiros behind him wow. misses again. I'm shocked at that. It looked good coming up, but it just didn't stick. And Nick Matthew adding 275 as we now have just one minute remaining. Sam Quant good at 270 in the back there, upper right hand part of your screen. Cole Greasehaber's jumping up to 275. Fakowski's going to 290. Greasehaber's nice good lift. at 275. Nice Chandler Smith Cole. at 295. Yeah, let's go, baby. He's good. Pat Vellner at 285 is good. Medeiros okay. now hits 275, so that's big for him. And he's still got enough time to get one more lift yeah. in. Here's Plug Fakowski at 290. On. That is good. And I mean, Fikowski's strategy paying off. He hasn't missed the lift yet. He's been totally calm, low heart rate. Within a matter of one lift, he overtook mostly everybody on the floor who got one or two lifts before him. That's right. Sam Started Quant off at just, 260. Pardon yeah. me, guys. Sam Quant just hit 280. Medeiros is going up to 285. And Fikowski loading up to 300. Velner set the lift. Velner at 290 there. The upper part of your screen. Yeah, Velner, get him. And he will get it. Medeiros at 285 will have that. Chandler Smith at 305 on the left, Fakowski at 300. Fakowski is good, Smith will miss, and there's the horn. Wow. Wow. So Brent Fakowski at 300 pounds. That will tie him for second place in the test. So one more look at Fakowski and Smith. Chandler just not quite enough trying to rush it in there at the, at the buzzer, but Brent Fikowski just technique work, just beautiful. Did you know what impressed me, actually? Justin Medeiros for failing 275 twice, coming back and then finishing at 285? That's pretty... I, I, was, I was shocked. You can check out the custom belts that Tupood has provided to all semifinal athletes. Every Tupood weightlifting belt comes equipped with a wad clamp that keeps you locked in rather than just relying on Velcro to keep you secured. The wad clamp secures your belt with a mechanical clasp, ensuring that your belt will never pop off and allowing you to comfortably transition between movements in a Metcon. Thank you to Tupood for helping our athletes lift heavy. Here's test number five. Now as we reset, and this one will begin with the 
Ace Nash is at 185, and then we're back on the runner. Well, and this is important, too, if we're talking about tiebreakers, because right now Brent has 300 on the board. Jacob Marlowe in the very first heat. Anthony Davis in an earlier heat. They both have 300 as well. So whoever has the faster time on test five gets the tiebreaker. Those are precious points. And Justin Medeiros is going to wind up with a lift of 285. It's a, ninth dude, place. Dude, that's a great. Super consistent. Very. The final heat of test five, eight snatches, and then the 800 meter run. I'm really excited to see how this run goes. You saw Madero's obviously probably a little frustration coming off of a few missed lifts, knowing he's going to try and make up some ground here. And Matthew you Fikowski, Madero's and Velder all to the runner at the same time. And, and you have guys that you know you're going to be competing with at the highest level on either side, and you feel like, hey, maybe this, maybe this is a chance to make a statement here. Oh, yeah. Fikowski's in a totally different mindset. You can already see it in his stride, that knee position. Just everything about him is completely different on this run, which it should be. So as far as the tiebreak is concerned for Fikowski with both Davis and Marlowe, Davis's time in this test, 318.2 seconds. Marlowe was 402.5. He was toward the back of his heat. Look at Fikowski's position and where his knees are. He's driving yep. his knees up higher, getting those longer strides. Again, as a fellow six-foot-plus athlete with some long getaway sticks, you can really get that thing humming. I don't know how that feels, but what I do know... <laughs> <laughs> What I do know is that we learned from last heat with Raphael and with Colton. These guys are going to get off, and I know for a fact they're going to sell out to hit that buzzer. They don't want to lose by a quarter of a second or whatever it might be. 307.56 seconds is your best time, and the Canadians are leading the way. Fikowski on the left, Velder on the right. All right. This is going to get good. Here we go, Chandler. Pat Felder started off the competition with his worst finish. He took 15th, then a third, another third, and right now sixth in test four. Well, part of that finish came wow. was he burnt in hard on the assault runner during that long event, so maybe a little redemption here on the runner by emptying the tank at the right time. Yeah, he seemed to fatigue out on those sled pulls. Okay, here we go. Well, Velder is in his final 200 meters along with Fakowski. The judge's hand in the air for both athletes. The judge's hand in the air for Matthew, Greasehaber, and Medeiros now. Wow. Pukowski looks like he's really putting it on right now. I think Vellner's going to get it, though. Let's see. There Vellner's going to be off. off first. Off. And Pat Vellner, 255. And here comes Pukowski. Nice job. 100 points to Pat Vellner. Pukowski's going to take second. There, there goes go. Sam, Sam Quan. That is big for Quan. He's looking to get into the top nine. Mitchell Stevenson and now Nick Matthew. Here come wow. Greasehaber wow. and Chandler Smith. And Smith may have edged out Greasehaber because of the slide. Now Medeiros is in. That was a fast heat. Chandler Smith is going to edge out Greasehaber by two tenths of a second. Medeiros will take 24th in that test. Now here comes John Wood across. Wow. 256.39 seconds for Pat Velder. Brent Fikowski was two seconds back of him. And look at Velner's pot. He looks like he just had a walk in the park. Dude, he didn't even lay on the ground. Did he really try? <laughs> <laughs> so once again, Pat Velder, 15th to start outside of a qualifying spot and then going on a charge since then. But Brent Fikowski is going to help himself in test number four because he gets in ahead of both Davis and Marlowe. So Bukowski, back-to-back second place finishes in test four and five. That'll wow. do just fine. 
And then after that, it was a race to finish. Sam Quant ends up taking third place in that heat. How about Pat Belder? Who possibly could find himself in the overall lead. Do you and think he, uh, Justin's going to probably drop down a little bit, right? We will have to see. Uh, a lot needs to be sorted out here, but there's a couple Canadians with Nikki Brazier right now. We're assuming the huddle position here. This is how everyone can breathe after this workout. <laughs> Uh, let me let me start with you, Pat. You told me earlier today that you were going to lean into your strength on that run and try to get that final point for yourself. Did it go according to plan? It did, and you know the snatching didn't go half bad for me either, which is nice. So it's a good day, and I know there's a big bottleneck. There's lots of strong guys, so the run being the tiebreaker, it pays a lot to push it on that run. So I think I made up lots of points there. Now, Brent, you're a man with a plan for sure. How did that lift go for you in comparison to what you were strategizing for? Yeah, that was perfect. I wish I would have put a little more weight on, but you don't know until you're out there. I was really happy with that. And uh, on the run, I just tried to have a heart attack. So I was going to say your composure looked very different on that second run than that first one. How flexible can you be with your plan when you're out there, given how you're feeling? Yeah, I think I usually try to stick to the plan for the first half of any workout really. And then the last half you kind of go on feel and hope you make good decisions in the first. And on that one it was just get on that run, push as hard as you can, try to see about three minutes per kilometer the whole time, fluctuate from there and just yeah, you know, try to run until your legs give out. Congratulations to both of you. Excited to see how the points shake out. Thank you guys so much. Of course, Brett Fikowski uses the word fluctuate. <laughs> in a post-game interview. Here are your results for semifinal test four. Wow. Tudor Magda, that's a test record. 325, he's going to pick up 100 points. Brent Fakowski takes second, courtesy of the tiebreak with Anthony Davis and Jacob Marlowe. Chandler Smith will finish in fifth with that lift of 295 pounds. Pat Velder picks up his first test win of the competition, followed by Brent Fakowski, Maximilian Krieg. He'll drop to third place. Brian Wynn from Heat 1 will finish fourth, and Sam Quant looking to move himself inside the top nine. Might do so with that fifth place result in test five. Well, the men are done, the women are gonna be coming up next in these back-to-back -back tests. We'll have light coverage of the first three heats, and then we will be back with you for four, five, and six. So stay with us here as action continues at the 2023 West Semifinal in Pasadena, California. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games North America West Semifinal is brought to you by GoWad, the mobility app designed for athletes. And the U.S. Army, be all that you can be. CrossFit is long lasting. It's the best way to get healthy and fit. It'll also be the best way to produce the most well-rounded athlete. Uh, the most athletic, well-rounded athlete that you can be. Like, it'll bring out the best physical version of yourself. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And that's why I compete. Um, and that's why I own the gym. Seeing what you're physically capable of, I think, is something that I've always wanted to, wanted to push that limit and push that boundary. And CrossFit gave me the ability to do that. I was diagnosed with breast cancer the night before the Open started last year. So last year's Open was very emotional for me as well. So going through the year that I had had, to be so grateful, to see how far I had come, and to be surrounded by people who love me, and to know that I'm not where I was, but I'm on my way back. Last year at this time was so daunting. I didn't really know what my fate was. Been dealing with some issues in terms of uh, um, some untreated PTS, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress, and some other. I suffered from major depression. Um, I was hospitalized when I. Uh, admitted to a co-worker of mine that I was uh, suicidal and my colleague had told me you know, that I needed help and um, 
I was I self-admitted into a psychiatric facility for 10 days. Um, I'd been diagnosed with major depression, with alcoholism. Uh, it really was to the point where I had given so much of myself to my work and everything else that I'd let myself suffer. And, uh, I, I walked in one day and that was the hardest thing I, I think I'd done was actually walking through the door. Um, I remember my first day there sitting in the back and didn't say a word um, and just kind of looked around and took it all in and it was frightening and, and you know, frightening and motivating and thrilling at the same time. CrossFit allows me to clear the cobwebs out of my head when it starts to get dark and, and things. You know, it's always there, it just doesn't go away. Um, CrossFit allows me to come in, work hard, suffer a little bit, and, and realize that it'll, it'll pass. Um, you know, that, that, that 22 minute wad is gonna be hard, but at minute 23, it's gonna be over, and it's just kind of like life, you know, like there's gonna be dark days, but that storm passes. For me, it's been a huge help, and it's really kept me regulated, and you know, definitely know the difference when I don't go. Yep, I'm done with my treatment. Um, I'm definitely not the same person that I was. I don't know if I ever will be physically, um, and I've accepted that, and I'm okay with that. Um, I work every day at that, but I'm um, much better now than I was. And every week is better, every month is better, and if this is as good as it gets, well then I'm pretty lucky.
Stand by. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is our first heat of elite women as they race to get to 800 meters. They also have waiting for them a max snatch for weight. A lot of heavyweight preloaded on that barbell. Miss Kiki D, I see a 175, I see a 180. In award preloading her barbell at 180. Davis Merrill at 155, Carson Wolf at 175. All right, Joshie D, it does not seem to matter which heat it is. They are all exciting. We saw some big things with the fellas in those first two heats. I'm expecting the same thing for our women as they get into 800 meters and that max snatch, keeping things exciting here at the Noble CrossFit semifinal. Handful of athletes already getting to the 200 meter mark as we pass the one minute and 15 second marker. This is heat one of six. Again, we saw in our last test for our men, test four and five, it was heat two. Marlo snatching 325. Will we see one of these ladies steal the show? As we have our first athlete, lane at number five, Amber Takara, getting Two to 400 in. meters. Couple more athletes reaching that 400 meter mark, less than 400 to go. Who's gonna get to 600 first? Right now it is lane up number five. Amber Takara on pace to get there first. A judge's hand is in the air. We've got an athlete pulling into the last 200 meters here. That is athlete 239, Amber Takara. Amber Takara and Carrie Stevenson are racing to be the first athletes off of that assault runner and over to the barbell. Let's cheer on these athletes as they work on those last 200 meters. All right, these athletes in their final bit, here's Takara. She'll be opening up at 125. Amber taking a big deep breath as she approaches the barbell. Alina Ward looking to open up at 155. Amber Takaro good at 125. Ward good at 155. Natalie Jennings going for 155. And it's good for Natalie Jennings. Carly Stone good at 150. Carson Wolf setting up for one. Set up for 175. Road trick good at 150. She got underneath it. Athlete 
athletes, you have one minute. seconds to go. Wolf approaching 190, Josh. 15 seconds. She's setting up. 10. Three, two, one. Time. Two minutes. 190, I believe, is the score currently to beat here in test four. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, 125 pounds on the bar. Look at Carly Stone go touch and go. Same goes for Carson Wolf. Wolf and Stone trying to get to that assault runner first. It is Carson Wolf. And lane number three, Alana Ward. Ward and Wolf stealing the show for test four, and they are racing for a victory here in test number five. We are one minute in. Again, this event with a six minute time cap, a new event now. Points are up for grabs. That snatch was 125. Eight snatches, they got through that, no problem. Into the 800 meter run. Savannah Averitt getting her marker bumped up. And then here comes everybody else. Currently, the first athletes on to that assault runner was Ward and Wolf.
Ward and Wolf. Carson Wolf. Alina Ward. Chasing down, trying to get to that magic number of 800 meters. This is test five. Test four and five back to back here out on the competition floor. Our athletes making moves because tomorrow that leaderboard is going to be a little bit different depending on your score in these two tests. Alina Ward in the orange top may be the front runner right now. Savannah Averitt out of CrossFit Sprague in lane number nine, battling it out with lane number three, Alina Ward out of Twin Bridges CrossFit. Approaching the three minute mark. Three minutes in, we are three minutes in. There it is, Ward. Ward with 200 meters or less to go. Same goes for lane number four. Hands are in the air for our front runners. Who's gonna be sprinting in to that finish first? There goes Wolf, Wolf. Ward, Beamer, all trying to get it done. You can hear the crowd starting to get a little rowdy, knowing that these athletes are coming in the home stretch of that 800 meter run. Here it is, lane number three, Alina Ward. Follow Next up, Davis Merrill getting it done. Joshi has lane number eight coming across. Davis Merrill, lane number four, Carrie Stevenson. Lane number five, Amber Takara. Here comes lane number one, Natalie Jennings. Little dive into the end zone for our athletes. Here comes lane number two, Hannah Morchuk. And last, but certainly not least, let's make some noise for Carly Stone. <laughs> Big round of applause to the athletes of heat number one.
Stand by. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Our athletes working on that first 800-meter run. The women of heat number two looking to make a statement here as our athletes patiently wait to see who's going to snatch the heaviest here. See some heavy weights already preloaded on the barbell. Barbell with 200 pounds on the bar. I see a 175. This workout is definitely one of the more exciting that we have seen through the semifinal competition. Obviously, anytime you have a max snatch, that keeps it fun and exciting here for us and the athletes. They're gonna show us what they've been working on this season. 200 meters for a few of those athletes. Martinez over in lane number one, 200 meters in. Same story for Emily Muir, Kelly Clark, joining us here from CrossFit Up. Meredith Swindle with Coyote CrossFit is in lane number four. Madison Michelini with Driven to Conquer CrossFit. Here we go, a little bump for lane number four. That's Meredith Swinder with Coyote CrossFit. Hitting two minutes in. Already most of our athletes at the halfway marker, less than 400 to go. Who's gonna take heat to test four? Pretty quiet out there, Pasadena. Let's make some noise for our athletes. There we go. As they get closer and closer to 800 meters. See 200 pounds on the bar for Madison. Will she be able to snatch that weight? Or will somebody else, like the other Madison, I'm talking about Madison Drader. She's got 160 on the bar. McElhaney with 200, Drader with 160. Kelly. Kelly Clark with 175. Late number four, Meredith Swindle with Coyote CrossFit. Her judge's hand shot up in the air, lane number four. We'll see how it goes. We've talked about it before, Joshy G. Obviously, this run is important. However, it really comes down to the weight on that snatch. Swindle in her final 100 meters. And then our athletes will settle in and get comfortable with that technique for the snatch as they look to go heavy here with individual event number four. Our first athlete off of the air assault runner, it is Moose Berger here. She is setting up. She's got some heavy weight on the bar as well. 175 on the bar for her. Madison McElhaney taking a big deep breath. She's got the most weight on the bar, at least to start. Freya setting up for 175. Muir getting 175. Clark getting 175. Here goes lane number five, McElhaney setting up for that heavy weight. She's got 200 on the bar, gets underneath it. Nicely done, very impressive. 200 ain't a thing for Madison McElhaney. The pressure not getting to McElhaney as she successfully lifts 200. 
Muir Freya. going for 190 in lane number two, platform number two. One minute, Muir stepping up to 190. It's good at 190 for Muir. 45 seconds. Going for 210 on platform number five. Solid lift for Madison. 30 seconds. She's going for more. Clark Good at 185. She's got about 20 seconds if she wants to go for 215. Athletes, 10 seconds. Swindle stepping up to 195. Here we go, Madison for 215. Three, two, one. Give it up for Madison. Lifting the most amount of weight. They got a two minute rest. Delaney at 205. Nicely done. Minute 30. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, our athletes working on those eight snatches at 125. They're moving very fast and very furiously, kicking through this. Which athlete is gonna be on that assault runner first? Look at that. Emily Freya. Muir. Freya over here in lane 10, followed by lane number two, sprinting to get that bad boy done. We got all of our athletes on these runners. We are one minute in, one minute in. Freya in the zone here, trying to get to that 200 meters first, but it is lane number two. Emily Muir getting the 200 meters first, followed up is Holly Henderson and Freya Mooseberger. 90 seconds in, and those markers are getting bumped up. 200, first 200 meters done for the majority of these athletes. Lead number two is stacked.
The crowd getting behind their athletes as we've hit the two minute marker. Remember, a six minute cap, but no one is gonna need that cap. We've seen it all test long between our men and women. They fly through this one, Kiki. This one is a sprint. As Holly Henderson getting to the halfway marker. Same goes for Freya. Henderson trying to catch up to Muir. Henderson in lane nine, Muir in lane two. These athletes working on test number five. They started with those eight snatches at 125 pounds and they finished with an 800 meter run. They are more than halfway, most of them more than halfway. This is heat two, test number five. A stacked heat as Holly Henderson, lane number nine, Madison Trader, lane eight, fight for that final 200 meters. Kelly Clark also coming to that last 200 meters. Will it be Holly? Will it be Madison Trader? Will it be Emily Muir? We're getting close and close to that finish line. Holly in the zone. And it looks like it's gonna be lane number nine, Holly Henderson. Followed right behind lane eight, Madison Trader. Kelly Clark. Freya Mooseberger getting it all said and done. Right behind her, Meredith Swindle. Here comes Jen Ryan and Anna Martinez, followed by Emily Muir. Next up, finishing out, lane number five, Madison McElhaney. And that is all she wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause to our athletes.
ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Our athletes already on to that assault runner, and they are making their way to that 800 meter mark. We see some heavyweight already preloaded on that barbell. 185 on the bar for Hannah Hall. Amy Hosky's got 165. Allie Thomason with 175. 195 for Danny Spiegel. We'll see how these athletes fare when they get off of that assault runner here. In test four and five, a little back-to-back -back action. Our first athletes to the 200 meter mark, lane at number four, Allison Weiss. Getting to the 200 meter mark. Heat number three happening right here, right now, day two of competition for our individuals at the North America West Noble CrossFit semifinal. I'm excited about this. It's been quite the event, quite the test of fitness. Hannah Hall is going to be opening up at 185. Danny Spiegel has 195 pounds, ready to rock and roll. Allie Thomason. Is going to open up at 175. Claire Truax, we've got 170 on her barbell. But first, they got to get through 800 meters. Most of our athletes have reached the 400 meter mark. They have 400 or less to go. It's going to get real exciting as we've seen all day long. Some big weight from both the men and the women being thrown around. Two and a half minutes in. Lane number four. Allison Weiss moving up to 600 meters. Less than 200 meters to go to lane number four. Same goes for lane 10. Lane number one. Also at 200 meters ago, that is Ashley Walden with CrossFit Blade. We're gonna see a sprint to the barbell here at any moment as we pass the three minute mark. This is heat number three. Let's make some noise for these athletes as they approach that eight. 100 meter mark. Test four underway as they are sprinting to get this bad boy done. All right. We've got our first athlete. Couple of athletes making their way to their barbell. Here we go, about five athletes making their way to the barbell as we hit the four minute mark. They have two minutes to build to that heavy snatch. Weiss opening with 155. Toya with a successful rep. Gabby with a successful rep. Danny Spiegel setting up for 195 as Trista getting a good rep in. Here comes Danny. Danny setting up for 190. 195 with these for Danny Spiegel. Woo! True acts good at 170. Both of those athletes are going to be bumping it up. Hoskin going for 165 on platform number five. Trista Smith with 
70, I don't know, Josh, can you tell me? Less than one minute to go. Danny Spiegel bumping it up to 2.05. 45 seconds, Walden getting 165. Ladies and gentlemen, Spiegel on platform six going for 2.05. Power snatching 205 like it ain't no thing. Spiegel going up to 215 with 20 seconds remaining. Can Danny Spiegel get 215? Athletes, you have 10 seconds. Let's make some noise to Pasadena for Danny Spiegel. Three, two. Athletes under two minutes. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. Sold out crowd here in Pasadena as our athletes make their way to the barbell. 125 on the bar. Danny Spiegel going touch and go. Lifting the heaviest weight in this heat. And looking to finish test five first. Danny with two more to go. Danny looking to get to that assault runner first. Toya. Gabrielle and Danny Spiegel on the assault runner first. And here we go, baby. Our athletes moving very quickly through test number five. We are at the one minute mark. Already a handful of athletes getting to that 200 meter mark, including Spiegel. Spiegel, Amy, Allison, all getting the 200 meters. Go, 
If you've got an athlete out here, go ahead and put your hands together for them. They just hit two minutes in. Some of these athletes are halfway. Lane number eight is at that halfway mark. That is Toya Nelson. Lane number 10, Gabrielle Spence out of CrossFit. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise as our athletes already in the halfway marker. This is what it's all about, that sprint to the finish. The crowd getting behind their favorite superstars. Lane number eight, Toya Nelson. Pink top, blue shorts, her final 200 meters. Right behind her, lane 10, Gabby Spence. It's between Toya and Gabby. Allison Weiss with a hand in the air as well. A little over three minutes in. Danny Spiegel in the mix as well, but will it be Toya? Will it be Gabby? It's a fight between lanes eight and ten. Toya racing into the end zone, and she will finish. Next up, Gabby Spence getting it done. Here we go, lane number four, Allison Weiss. Lane number five, coming in, Amy Hosking. Here comes Danny Spiegel. Less than two minutes remaining as we have our next set of athletes, lane seven, Trista Smith. Lane nine, Allie Ashley Thomason. Walden is done. Lane number two coming in. Oh, it's going to go lane three, Hannah Hall, and then Claire Chuax. That is a wrap for heat three.
Three heats down, three remain in tests four and five for the individual women here at the North America West semifinal from the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar and Tommy Marquez. We got Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. Action started earlier today with test number three. Linda with the dumbbell bench press. 100 points on the line. And Hannah Black, who finished third in test number one, came out and had a really strong performance. She has a master's in biomechanics and motor control, and she finishes sixth in the test, 13.21.89 seconds. Olivia Kerstetter, she was strong throughout the test, came in in 12th place overall. Alex Kazan had that great battle with Ariel Lowen last night. She will wind up finishing second in the test the time of 12.26.86 seconds, but it's Olivia Kerstetter who takes the victory, 12.13.5 seconds, and that result would move Olivia Kerstetter way up the overall standings. Alex Kazan and Danny Spiegel rounding out the top three. Kerstetter goes all the way up to fourth place overall. Top 10 qualify for the CrossFit Games. Alex Kazan is your overall leader, followed by Ariel Lowen. Bethany Shadford drops from first down to third. Back-to-back -back tests here in four and five. The heavy barbells are out, but you got to earn your strength here. You certainly do. You've got to earn that strength, get on that bar, run fast. Recipe for success is? Easy at the start here in test four and 200 meters at a time in test five. Here are your lane assignments for the 10 athletes who will be on the field. Keep an eye on lane number two. Elia Miller has the potential to put up some big numbers here. 20th overall after test number three, looking to work her way into striking position for a spot inside the top 10. Miller's best finish coming in test number two, where she finished 12th. And trying to bounce back from a 21st in test three. We are underway. We begin with the 800 meter run. And Madison McElhaney has the top lift at 210 pounds. Danny Spiegel got close to that in the prior heat. Spiegel was able to hit 205 pounds. Let's take a look at Allison Scuds from Rhino CrossFit in lane number one. This first 800 meters, Sean, they're just, they're easing into this snatch. They're warming up, basically. It's a pace about 70, 80% of their max. You'll see most jaws, most shoulders relaxed. They're focusing on what's ahead, not really what's happening on the monitor right now. So Rebecca Fusilet coming in 28th place overall. Rebecca's worked really hard on her strength all season long. And talking with her earlier, she's looking at that barbell and kind of look at her chops for some redemption. Fuchsle started with a 59th place in test number one. Then bounced back in semifinal test two. Took fourth, but then 33rd in test three. She's a smaller athlete, Sean, so we knew that rope drag was going to be, that hand over hand pull was going to be a challenge for her, but She's come far. She's ready to go. Prove herself. She's a fighter. Marissa Stapp on the right side of the screen in lane five. Hattie Cano in lane number eight. Far right side of your screen towards the front here on this initial 800 meter run. Smooth strides. It's not one here. Again, we're looking at 70 to 80 percent of their max effort. This is just a warm up. Everyone's looking nice and relaxed. There are the barbells that have already been loaded. It's going to be Miller in the bottom part of your screen in the blue shirt. Looks like she has the heaviest barbell out there right now at 
185. Chloe Wilson may also have 185 on the barbell as well. She does there in lane seven. Ellie's max snatch is 215 pounds. She recently PR'd that. She wants another PR is what she told me. She's a smart girl, neuroscience major. Told you yesterday she's got her level one, her CrossFit level two. She's coaching at Cobra Command there in Kansas, Nebraska. Or can Kansas, Nebraska. Kansas. I'm from Nebraska. She's my neighbor. Patty Kanyo's judge's hand is in the air. Kanyo coming in at 26th place overall. Final 100 meters of Kanyo. She is done and we'll have a little less than two and a half minutes to get a one rep max snatch here. Plenty of time for at least three attempts. She has 170 on the bar and a fusillade is off. She's going to open at 150. Carissa Stapp is done as well. Maddie Edwards is done. Chloe Wilson is the other athlete chalking up her hands there towards the top of your screen. She's got 185 on the barbell and Elliot Miller bottom left of 185 and Fusilet hits her opener. As does Haiti. There's Chloe Wilson right side 185. She's got to stay. In the box, I'm not sure that's going to count. I do believe I saw the judge's uh, hand go no rep there. And Miller's going to miss her opener too. So both Wilson and Miller miss their opening list. Allison Scuds is going to hit 155. Ellie Miller just regrouping here in the corner, catching a little break. Natalia Flores in the back there in lane 10 just made 165. And here's Miller's second attempt at 185. And she will be able to stand that up. With a smile. She's got that confidence. Let's see what she puts on the bar next. Well, Chloe Wilson towards the top is getting ready to lift again. She's going up to 190 pounds. Now remember, she got a no rep her first attempt here, Sean. 45 seconds left. This has got to count for her. And she will hit that. Nice. That was beautiful. Didn't even move her feet. Elbows were high and outside. She could have sat in that squat, hung out there for a good five seconds. Well, Miller's going to go for 200 pounds left side of your screen. Inside 30 seconds to go. I'm not able to get it. Rebecca Fusilay is going to load up to 175 behind her. This would be a PR for her. Chloe Wilson has 200 on the bar as well. And Miller is going to go again. Wilson hits hers, so Chloe Wilson at 200 to beat the buzzer. Beautiful. So composed after she had missed that first initial opening lift. Solid two attempts after that. She had more in the tank. But Chloe Wilson opened it. 185 miss and then hit her remaining lifts. And this is one more look at the good lift at 200 as Miller fails on the left. We get reset now for test number five. Now, Chloe Wilson with that lift, she's tied for third place. So her time here in test number five is going to determine whether she sits in third by herself or in fourth. There's Carissa Stapp and across at Billings. Getting set for those eight snatches at 125 pounds and then the 800 meter run. 16th overall after test three. So she's trying to get a little closer to the top 10 heading into the final day. Carissa loves to run. She's done over 100 mile trail runs up in the mountains there in Montana. Well, her lift of 155 
right now has her tied for 28th in test four. So she's got to come up with a big performance here in test five. There's Rebecca Fusile. She hit 175 on that bar. That is an incredible attempt. Yeah, PR for Rebecca Fusile at 175 pounds. Eight reps at 125 pounds to open up here in test five. Most of these women should be touching and going these reps. Cycle it slightly faster if you brush beyond that, that hip crease and that thigh, just go straight from overhead to the floor. And Maddie Edwards is the first woman done, followed by Wilson and Miller. And Zoe Warren. And now all 10 athletes will make it to the runners. Natalia Flores was the last woman to get there. Every 200 meters on this air runner matters, Sean. You're increasing with speed and intensity as you get beyond those 200 meters. There's Allison Scuzz in lane one, Noah Olson on the left. Allison really focusing on that breathing. You can see that she's taking a couple inhales followed by a forceful exhale. Olson was shouting some words of encouragement to Allison Scuzz before we got there. The score to beat. Belongs to Toya Nelson at 3 minutes 29.21 seconds. Well, Hattie Kanyo in lane eight, leading right now on this 800 meter run. Chloe Wilson sits in second, and then Carissa Stapp is in third. Chloe's looking composed there. Nice relaxed shoulders, light on those toes, eyes straight ahead. And there is Carissa Stapp, who was at the Crossing Games in 2021 on a team. They finished 10th. She's a tax accountant. Here we go. And a coach. That's great. I'm all about that coach. So you'll, she'll itemize your deductions and help you clean up your clean. <laughs> Adekanyo in lane eight, still the leader here. Credit is crossing for helping get her life back on track. Here she is competing in the semifinals and right now leading this heat. 329.21 seconds. That is the score to beat. Hands in the air now in lane six for Maddie Edwards and for Chloe Wilson. And Hattie Kanyo also Carissa Staff left side of the screen. Arms are swinging a little bit faster. You can see Hattie there on the right side of your screen. You know, she's just shoulders are kind of moving side to side. The jaw is dropping a little bit. This is definitely a an effort she is putting in the work here. Kanye looking to be the first woman off. That's it. And she will do it. And not sure she's going to get it inside the time to beat. Barely misses it. And now in lane five, Carissa Stapp is across. Chloe Wilson is in. Zoe Warren and Maddie Edwards. Impressive finish by Carissa. She was one of the last to the air runner after those eight uh, power snatches there at 125. Now Miller is off, and she is across the finish line. Fusile is in. Ocaño is going to win the heat with a time of 331.11 seconds. That'll be second right now in the test, as both Samantha Petrich and Natalia Flores are across the finish line. These Allison Scuds as the last woman on the floor. And Scuds is in. 
right now 31st in the test for Scuds. Hattie Kanyo, though, second place in the test as she just misses Toya Nelson's top time of 3 minutes 29.21 seconds. There is Hattie Kanyo finishing up her 800 meter run and getting across the finish line and collapsing and just miss the top time by two seconds and close finish between Staff and Chloe Wilson. So two heats remain. We'll step aside for a quick second and when we return, action continues here in test four and five for the women at the North America West semifinal. Two heats remain here for the women in these back-to-back -back tests as the third day of competition at the North America West semifinal comes to a close for the individuals in Pasadena, California. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar and the CEO of CrossFit, Don Fall. Don, thanks so much for being here, man. Hey, Appreciate thanks it. for having me. Excited well, to be here. Nice, must be nice to be a fan for a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Let's take a look at the overall standings coming into tests four and five. Now, Alex Gazan is your overall leader with 257 points. Right now, Zoe Warren coming into this test would be the last woman to advance in the CrossFit Games with 181 total points. Back-to-back -back tests here start with that 800-meter run. And then this is what everybody wants to see, the heavy barbells. They sure do. Yes, it's about just taking it nice and easy, running about 70 to 80 percent on the air runner and focus on what's ahead. You want about three attempts, possibly even four attempts there on that barbell. In test five, here we are. All right. It's it's about that 200 meter increment. It's kind of ticking it every two minutes, upping the ante. Easy to start on test four, upping the ante every 200 meters. Looking at that, laying it down in the last 200s on test five. Ten women here in this fifth of six heats. And in lane six, 
is Olivia Kerstetter. Fourth overall, had a big result in test three, got the win there to get her inside the top ten. And then next to her, Sydney Michalishan. Michalishan in ninth place overall with 194 points. So trying to get some distance between herself and that cut line. And we start with the 800 meter run. And Don, you're coming up on your one year anniversary of you know, being the CEO of CrossFit. So let's start with the things that you still think you know, need to improve uh, in, with uh, the way things are going right now. Where, oh. you know, where you still have some work to do. Well, yeah, the, the games for me will be my one year anniversary. Right. I mean, what what better place to celebrate? Um, look, I think we can get better across the board. And, you know, I've been been in seat now for nine months. Super proud. The team's been been doing an incredible job across the board. But look, every day we come in and look at every single part of what we're doing and figure out how we raise the bar. How do we do it in sport? How do we do it to serve in our affiliates? How do we create a, a better experience for our, our community? How do we get more people into CrossFit, into the CrossFit community? So, um, you know, every time we take a step forward, we think about what's next. But speaking of that, where do you think you've made the most progress since you've been in charge? You know, I think one of the things that I am really proud of is the work that we've been doing to, to support our affiliate community. You know, we know that at the end of the day, you know, they are the foundation of our community. That's where lives are, are being changed. That's where, for a lot of these athletes, that's where their journey started, right? And uh, our team has been working really, really hard uh, to increase the level of support. And uh, it's really you know, gratifying as I meet with affiliate owners, I met with a bunch today, and hearing from them that they've seen a, a noticeable uh, increase in the investment and the support uh, from our team. And so I'm really grateful to folks on our team who have been hustling to make that happen. I would agree. I would agree. As an affiliate owner myself, I thank you for that. I love the vision. I vision. I love the mission. Um, in May, let's talk about the the CrossFit affiliate programming that became free to all affiliates here worldwide. I love that. I think it just raises the level of play for every affiliate owner. It's super important that every class is ran on time. It's organized. There's a lot of energy. It's you know top to bottom well ran. So tell me a little bit about the programming that's available to all affiliates worldwide. Yeah, we have this uh, incredible, you know, CrossFit affiliate programming. Um, it's an incredible program. We've got some of the most experienced folks in the community and uh, who, who are creating that programming every day. And, you know, the decision we made to, to make that available for free was really all about how do we better support our affiliates and how do we make sure that every member of our community, community is getting really high quality programming. I was talking to an affiliate owner today, actually, from Mexicali, Mexico, who told me, was sharing with me what an impact CAP has had for him and, and uh, the, the incredible feedback he's getting from his members. That's great to hear. Yeah, it certainly saves an affiliate owner some time if they're the one programming. Um, I program myself, so this I know, but yep. thank you for that. Oh. What do you have coming up? Because I know you're not staying in one place for a while. That's right. That's right. Where are you going to be? Um, so I am uh, going home for a brief stint tomorrow. Say hi to the family. Heading to Berlin on Tuesday. Fired up for that. Um, and then I'm actually going from Berlin to spend some time with our affiliate community in Italy and then uh, France after that. And then a brief stint back at home before I get out on the road again. Hopefully there's no time zone change there when yeah. you get back home. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not going to know which way is up. But. <laughs> That's right. Both Emily White and Olivia Kerstetter, Emily White on the far right side of your screen, and Olivia Kerstetter are just about done with this first 800 meter run, and Sydney McAlishan on the left, she's also just about finished as well. And looking at the barbells on the floor, it looks like 175. Kerstetter's got that on the bar, and McAlishan as well. Also in the back, Chelsea Nicholas has 175 on the barbell. So Kerstetter's done. Emily White is done. White, I believe, also with 175 on the barbell, top of your screen. Here's first setter's first attempt. And that will count for first setter. White is good at 175. Sydney Michalishan has yet to make her opening attempt at 175. This opening attempt here is something that you can make even when you're sick. That's what I always say. Should be confident in this first lift. Get something under your belt. Mikalishan just missed her first attempt at 170. Kelly Baker just put up 
170. Emily White's going to 190, as is Olivia Kerstetter. Kerstetter good at 190. Abigail Doman is good at 175. Sydney McVillian got herself sorted. She hit 175, and Emily White just made 190. And now Kerstetter going up to 200. Fun fact here, Olivia snatched at 15 years old, 202 pounds, which was more than any individual athlete at the 2021 CrossFit Games. What do you think when you hear that, Dawn? I mean, that just says Curse Center now hits 200. Uh, that's outrageous. It's, it's so just... impressive. So impressive. I think at my age, I wish I could do that. Super impressive. Mikulishin just missed at 185. Sydney just needs to, she just needs to calm down here. She needs to reevaluate her setup, take a deep breath. I believe that was 200 for Emily White that she just missed. The 205 for Kerr set her now. This would tie her for second with Danny Spiegel. Sydney Mikulishin just made 185. Emily White has hit 200. Kerr set her is good at 205. Beautiful. That was a solid lift. And now we got some buzzer beaters out there as Rachel Noel just stepped out of bounds at the bottom of your screen. So 180 won't count for her. But 205 for Olivia Kerstetter. She didn't even move her feet. It was a slow pull off the ground. Elbows were high and outside. She found that hip pocket perfectly, and boom. She could have sat in that squat for at least another five seconds. One more look at Olivia Kerr at her 205 in the background, Emily White at 200. And that'll do. Textbook. I wish I looked like that with an empty barbell. <laughs> Don, one cool thing, and, and you mentioned this, uh, you know, about getting more people involved, getting more coaches involved, but there are a lot of athletes who are also coaches here in this community. How are you using you know, the sport to help build what's going on in the affiliate and vice versa? Yeah, absolutely, and that's a big part of our focus uh, at HQ is about growing the community, and sport's an incredible way to do that. Uh, uh, we, you know, for every athlete here on the floor, their journey in a lot of cases started either as a coach um, or started with a coach who helped them get here. And so um, we had a real big focus on how do we make this incredible education program that we've got available to more of our community. We're almost set for the beginning of test number five. As we saw Olivia Kerstetter put up a lift of 205 pounds and tie for second place in test four. Test five starts with those eight snatches at 125 pounds and then we're back on the runner. And those snatches should be touch and go at this point. Um, there's nothing crazy about it. You just got to stand up tall with every single rep before you go back down to the floor. It's about that 800 meters on the air runner. Every 200 meters matter and those last 200 meters you're going to see him go full throttle here till the very end. <laughs> Test five underway for heat five of six. And Don, I know there were some people wondering what it was going to look like with CrossFit taking over some of these semifinals. You know, I was in Orlando last week. The atmosphere there was great. Seems like it's been duplicated here in, in Pasadena. What's been your impression of how things have gone? The, uh, it's been, the, the weekend's been, uh, it's been amazing. And, and I've talked to uh, a ton of fans. I've talked to a ton of uh, affiliate owners, a ton of athletes. And heard time and time again, the energy has been electric. You can feel it here uh, in, inside the venue. Uh, and a lot of, you know, I think for the community, I hear from a lot of people, it feels like regionals. Yes, you know, agreed. It feels like regionals in a really incredible sort of way. And just about every athlete got done with her eight snatches at 125 pounds within a couple seconds of each other. Now we have the 800 meter run. The score to beat belongs to Toya Nelson, three minutes, 29.21 seconds. That's Kelly Baker in lane three. Yeah, Kelly. She's got her level one there, coach herself. So she knows all about the technique. She knows about the form. She knows about how to approach the workouts and strategize in different ways that a lot of different athletes may necessarily not know. Lane eight is Emily White. She lifted 200 pounds 
in test number four and she's out in front here early in this 800 meter run. Emily White coming in in 24th place overall. She also has her level one. She coaches at the PAC CrossFit in Idaho. She too knows how to strategize, how to approach these runs. She tells her members all the time there in Idaho how to approach the workout and how to run the 800. Don, are you a barbell guy or are you a, a, a runner guy here? Ooh, uh, definitely a runner guy. Really? I love the barbell, but better at the run. We'd make a good team then. I think that comes with age, maybe? No, I'm kind of no, feel it does not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting faster with age, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that for is, sure. yeah. Emily White is your leader right now. She's on the left. Abigail Domitz on the right. She currently sits in second place here on this 800 meter run. Emily looks great out there. She's throwing her cheeks, uh, hands cheek to cheek. She's super upright. You can see she's starting to stride out a little bit as she makes her way up to the 600 meter mark. And there she goes. 200 meters to go for Emily White. Trying to track down Toya Nelson's top time of 3 minutes 29.21 seconds. Kelly Baker's judge's hand is in the air along with lane two, Rachel Noel. And now in lane one, Marissa Flowers' judge's hand goes in the air. These girls are going to fight to the very end here. Chelsea Nicholas down in lane 10, judge hand in the air. Now a hand in the air for Bailey Rail. Chelsea Nicholas, another Masters athlete. That's my girl. <laughs> And Emily White is off first, and she will have the new top time, 317.45 seconds. Here comes Abigail Domit. She'll take second, and now Kelly Baker is in, along with Marissa Flowers. Or probably Rachel Noel and Marissa and uh, Kelly Baker. Marissa Flowers still on the treadmill. Judge's hand is in the air for her. And down in lane 10, Chelsea Nicholas is in. Okay, noted. Chelsea can run. Addison Balderson is across. Here comes Bailey Rail. And now Marissa Flowers. It leaves Mikolishin and Kerstetter as the only two athletes left on the treadmill. Now Kerstetter is off, and she'll come across with a time of 4 minutes, 0. 0.32 seconds. Mikolishin close behind her, 402.64. But new leader is Emily White, 317.45 seconds. She looked good out there. I told you about her arm swing going cheek to cheek. She was nice and upright. Those last 200 meters, folks, for those of you who weren't here, she was striding out. She looked so good and comfortable on that air runner. Don, we've seen a lot of fun moments here these first three days. What's been some of the best stuff that you've seen? Gosh, um, you know, the, yeah, the competition has been incredible so far. Uh, highlight for me actually was the, the last men's heat in this event was incredible uh, you know the, coming down to the wire between Vellner and Fikowski the place was going absolutely bonkers like that's what this is all about love that event I love Linda mm -hmm. I uh, some buddies and I did uh, this Linda workout in the in, in, in our affiliate a couple weeks ago and took us slightly longer than it took <laughs> these guys let's just leave it at that but you did with they do, they do did, tend to I set did unrealistic with dumbbells. expectations nice. I did it with dumbbells <laughs> I would say I, I'm glad I wasn't getting perfectly judged on the workout because they were not all perfect reps, I'll tell you that. Well, Don, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Best of luck in uh, all your endeavors. I know you're working hard. We really appreciate it. And uh, Thank you guys so much. Berlin, really appreciate it.
One heat remains before the women are done with their second day of competition here at the Pasadena Convention Center at the North America West semifinal. We are glad you are with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tobar, and Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Overall standings coming into these back-to-back -back tests. Alex Gazan sits atop the overall leaderboard with 257 points. Zoe Warren right now would be the last woman to the CrossFit Games. She has 181 points. She's only 13 back of Sydney Michalishan for ninth place. Back-to-back -back tests here. We're going to run first, then snatch heavy, and then we're going to reverse that in test five. Test four isn't necessarily about that air runner. It's more about getting to the barbell and getting at least three attempts, potentially even four at the buzzer. But you want to run about 70 to 80 percent. Test five is about touching and going those snatches. It's just eight reps, 125 on the bar, and then every 200 meters, tick it up full throttle at the end. Recipe for success. What are you cooking up? Easy to start in test four. Ease into this thing. It's a warm up. Test five, 200 meters at a time. Full speed ahead those last 200 meters. 10 women in the sixth and final heat. Bethany Shadburn is in lane number five. She started the day in the overall lead. Right now, third place overall. And for more on her, here's Nikki Brazier. And Bethany told me earlier that she is very well aware that it's moving day for most of these women, but maintenance day for her today. Now, unfortunately, she has not been able to snatch heavyweights for the better part of the last year due to her back injury. But truthfully, she's happy to even be here competing and happy to have qualified for this event. So zero expectations for this test, but just going to do her best effort and see if that's enough to maintain. Well, one athlete who does have expectations for this test is Christine Kohlenbrander, seventh place overall, and she can push for the top score in this test. I'm rooting for my affiliate owner. Her and her husband, Jared, own CrossFit 417. They're neighbors to Nebraska, so neighbors to Omaha, my homeland. Um, she actually got her dad to start CrossFit in uh, Naples there, so I think I'm rooting for her. And then Hannah Black in lane one, another woman who could push Madison McElhaney for the win here. McElhaney's top mark, 210 pounds right now. She did that in heat number two. The test four is underway. We start with the 800 meter run. Well, there is Alex Kazan who is our overall leader coming in. She's had back-to-back -back finishes inside the top two. She won test number two and finished second in test three to Olivia Kerser. Looks like she's opening up there behind her at 165. Well, Hannah Black, we mentioned her down in lane number one. Right now, her barbell is loaded at 205 pounds. Biomechanics degree, she knows what's up. Hannah Black in sixth place overall. Moved up from ninth after test three. And this is good news for you, Stacey, because China Cho is in the front now on this 800 meter run. Dude, you give this girl <laughs> any sort of aerobic work and she is going to crush it. This is her jam. This I know. Um, so basically, if there's anything aerobic at the games, I mean, China may take it. I got some work to do. Unless she makes it as an individual. Hey, makes your life a little bit easier. Don't tell <laughs> anybody I said that. There is Catherine Davis daughter who comes in in fifth place overall. Her worst finish was a 23rd. That was in test two, but Two eighth place finishes, one in test one and one in test three. Looking great on that runner. Totally in control, composed. Beautiful. 202 points, but still has some work to do as she is only 21 points clear of Zoe Warren in 10th. And look how close it is in 11th, 12th, and 13th. Only 10 points separating Zoe Warren from Bailey Rail in 13th. That's the drama of the weekend. This has been the name of the game this whole time. It's going to be down to the last test. We know this. And 
there is Ariel Lowen. Second place overall and had a great battle with Alex Kazan last night in test two. Get this fun fact. She did Linda OK in 2018 and didn't know she was pregnant. <laughs> she did it when she was pregnant. Well back in 2021 she went to the Granite Games because she just wanted to get her nameplate to put in the new house that they were moving into what? and wound up winning the whole thing and then going to the CrossFit Games. She's not human. Get out of here. Finished You're making us moms look really bad, Ariel. Regional Linda, 2018 in the South Regional Utah there. The China Cho is just about done with her 800 meter run. Are you surprised? Let's go, China. You go, girl. <laughs> She has 145 pounds on the barbell to open. It's right behind her. That sounds about right. She she was stoked during the open when she hit that 155 there in the final test. So Bethany Shadburn is off. She's going to open at 155. David's daughter is done. She's got 165 on her barbell. China Cho is done. And now Stacey Larum is done as well. We're waiting on Hannah Black, Alex Gazan, and Christine Kohlenbrander. So two women who are looking to put up the heaviest lifts here are just now finishing up their run. So Hannah Black is done. Shadburn's going to hit 155. Davis daughter at 165 is good. So Hannah Black is going to open at 205. And that is no problem. And right now, tied for second place in the test with plenty of time remaining. Here goes Gazan. That's a good lift for her. Now her max snatch is, okay, I don't say only, but 185 pounds. So that is a great lift, well, first Chris, lift for her. Christine Kohlenbrander missed 185 on her first attempt, got right back on it and just hit it. So Hannah Black now going to 215. This would put her in first place. That last te uh, lift there was incredible. That was textbook. Catherine Davis' daughter's at 180 in the back in those long black pants. She's made that. And that's good. Now here's 215 for Hannah Black. This would put her in first place in this test. And that is going to count. Wow. No problem for Hannah Black, and she has our top score with now just 30 seconds remaining. That was perfect. She doesn't need to go for another lift here. She's going to throw more weight on, but she doesn't need to do this. She's yes, going to she go does. for 230. Yes, she does. We want to see this, shot. From Let's a strategy go. standpoint, she doesn't. She's got the win pretty much locked up. 10 seconds to go. Black's got 230, and she's going to go for it. And whoa, hit it. But trying to put on a show for the crowd, we appreciate it. 215 pounds is going to get her the test win in 100 points. She had that. The head judge blew the buzzer thing, and that screwed her up. <laughs> she had that. Give her another chance. She opens at 205. And this looked like a warm up. And then threw 215 on the barbell, and this for the test win. Oh my goodness. Well, Christine Kohlenbrander hit 205. She's tied with Kerstetter right now and Spiegel. Although Kerstetter sits in fourth ahead of Spiegel because she won the tie break. What? You can check out the custom belts that Tupood has provided to all semifinal athletes. Every Tupood weightlifting belt comes equipped with a wad clamp that keeps you locked in. Rather than just relying on Velcro to keep you secured, the wad clamp secures your belt with a mechanical clasp, ensuring that your belt will never pop off and allowing you to comfortably transition between movements in a Metcon. Thanks to Tupood for helping our athletes lift heavy.
There's Catherine Davids out who put up 190 pounds right now tied for 11th place. So this next test is going to come in big as far as tiebreakers are concerned. Yes, yeah, sprint to the barbell. Get to your lane as quick as possible. Get your hands on that bar. It's 125 pounds. Grip and rip, baby. Let it roll. Get on that treadmill and start going. Get that thing uh, turning around on that air runner. There's Hannah Black who just pocketed 100 points courtesy of her 215 pound lift. She came in in sixth place overall. So looking to crack the top five here. Both her and Christine had a 225 pound max snatch listed. Well, the time to beat is 3 minutes 17.45 seconds. And Lauren Fisher, Ariel Lowen, Christine Kohlenbrander, David's daughter, Black, and Stacey Larum, followed by Emily Rolfe in those long pink pants. Yeah, Stacey Larum started CrossFit in 2019. Uh, she here loves to travel to national parks, obviously loves competing in CrossFit. I love this. She hopes for the younger generation to Look at quality first before quantity. I think that's really important. Sometimes, you know, these ladies are superheroes. We inspire to become just like them. But for her, it's about, hey, I started in 2019. I focused on quality movement first. And it's magical how it happens. But here she is in this heat here in Pasadena at this semifinal. Incredible job. And Lurham has a test win, won the opening test of the competition. Meanwhile, Lauren Fisher down to lane number 10 leads on this 800 meter run. Fisher 17th place overall coming into this test. Yeah, she's got China Cho right next to her too. So she's got a great pace. She can see where China's kind of at. She can hear the judge as well. Lauren is a great runner. Um, she's always been a, a really solid runner. Great aerobic capacity, works really hard on that. I'm really proud of her. She looks great. Well, Emily Rolf. Coming into this test on the outside looking in, but not by much. 11th place overall, and she's tied for 41st right now in test four. The nice thing about both tests, though, Sean, they're each worth 100 points. So although she may have not done what she wanted to do in test four, she's looking to, you know, do a little bit better here in test five. She's looking great on that runner. Emily White has the time to beat 317.45 seconds. And Catherine Davis' daughter is towards the front, along with China Cho and Lauren Fisher right now. Those three are definitely playing off of each other. Judge's hand in the air for Catherine Davis on her and Emily Rolf. More judges' hands going in the end there for Ariel Lowen, Stacey Larum, Bethany Shadburn. Keep an eye on Emily Rolf in the pink pants. She and Catherine Davis are at the top of your screen, are pretty much neck and neck right now. Rolf opening up the stride. Davis' daughter's off, and she's going to make it across. She's not going to win the test, but that will help her. Rolf is in. Davis' daughter's going to finish second. That'll be 97 points for her, and Emily Rolf is going to take third place. Here comes Lauren Fisher. And now Ariel Lowen. Alex Gazan is in, and Bethany Shadburn is off. Here comes Larum in lane two. Colin Brander's done. Hannah Black and China Cho still out there, both inside their final 100 meters. Black is done. She will take ninth place in the heat, 31st in the test, and now China Cho to close out heat six. It's Katrin Davis that are just missing Emily White's time. But David's daughter is going to finish second. That's going to be her best result so far of this competition. Three minutes, 19.62 seconds. Emily Rolfe just one second behind her.
Emily White's going to hang on for the victory. Abigail Doman and Kelly Baker round out to the top five. Toya Nelson, who did have the score to beat early on, will slide down to sixth. Here's a look at your Rogue replay, and this is how close it was between Emily Rolf and Katherine Davis out of just one second separating the two of them to the finish. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier, who's with Hannah Black and Catherine Davis. -Zahn. Unbelievable showing, ladies. Congratulations, Catherine. Let me start with you. You have so much experience on the competition floor. How does that help you prepare for an event like this? Honestly, it's just trusting myself, trusting that I've done this for so long that whenever I go with my gut, it seems to work. And in true honesty, I texted Chris Hinshaw for this one because he knows me so well. And I texted him and said, hey, I need you. I need a winning strategy. <laughs> so he helped me through that one, both with pacing and just with the uh, mental aspect of how to get through it fast. It looked so incredibly smooth. And Hannah, you looked so smooth on that barbell. Your relationship with the barbell must be something truly special, right? Oh, yeah. I started lifting in high school and have loved it ever since. Anytime I see a heavy barbell, I'm like, today is my day. For sure. What was that 215 like in comparison to what you've hit before, what you wanted to do out here today? Um, in practice on Tuesday, I hit 225, so that's why I really swung for it with the 230. But I mean, we planned for this. I prayed for it, practiced like hell, and, and I knew it was going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Congratulations, ladies. Great work. Thank, Thank you. you. Hannah Black, 100 points. Hopefully, she doesn't let it go to her head. Madison McLean is going to finish in second at 210 pounds. Christine Kohlenbrander and Olivia Kerstetter both got 205 along with Danny Spiegel, but Kohlenbrander got the results she needed in the tiebreak to move from fifth up to third in that tiebreak. Then you have three athletes with 200 pounds, Emily White, Chloe Wilson, and Emily Muir. So the individuals are done for the day. We will take a break when we come back. The sixth and final test of the teams, and we will know who will be heading from the North America West semifinal to represent the team division at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games North America West semifinal is brought to you by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rose, don't weaken. Wild Health, revolutionizing healthcare, unleashing your athletic potential. And Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. You know, if you're interested in the games and you find yourself really captivated by what's going on there, truly what you're interested in is the CrossFit philosophy and method. And you should know that you've got a ton of amazing resources available to you. I mean, check out the main site, look at the old journal articles, dig in on the website. There's content every day that's posted on CrossFit.com that helps to bolster your understanding of, of what you're seeing unfold at the pinnacle on the field of play. I would encourage everybody that's a fan of the sport to dig in, find a coach, go get your hands dirty with this stuff, and it really does enrich the experience for you. Uh, not only in your life, but your ability to enjoy what you're seeing in front of you. And as an extension, I mean, man, if you're interested in the games, you're interested, therefore, in the method, go get your level one, go check it out. You'll find that everything that's expressed at the level one is the bedrock of what you're going to see in the expression on the field of play. Since 2007, the leading cause of accidental death in Ohio has been overdose. 149 pills for every man, woman, and child in the county, and I did a lot of them. 
Spent two deployments to Iraq and then came back home to a town I didn't even really recognize. It was ravaged by an opioid epidemic. Yeah, this looks about as sketchy as you uh, described it. Horseville, Ohio had the highest per capita pain clinics in the country. There's nothing on the street today that doesn't have fentanyl in it. You can't put anything in your mouth. It doesn't come directly from the pharmacy. People had surrendered to this enemy, and there was no one willing to fight back. At some point in your life, you weren't afraid to die. Don't be afraid to live right now. This is hillbilly rehab. Exercise has clearly been identified as a tool that can be used in the recovery process. We've got everybody from addicts to immigrants. We all need a challenge, and we all need the ability to overcome. What we're trying to do is, is a very aggressive kind of approach. We're just trying to do it better. That's the biggest thing that we do here. We give people an opportunity to earn. I've probably spent over a year and a half incarcerated. My last class, Dale comes up to me, was like, hey, why don't you come work for me? With the right training, we can have a big role in bringing American manufacturing supply back to small towns. Now you got some confidence, you know, now you think you can overcome anything. It's very easy to relapse. He was flying too close to the sun. He started to become someone else. This affects everybody. We want to tell everybody, and maybe you don't have to go through what we went through. Go! There's a lot of good going on in this town, and it's because there, there are people that care about this community. Come on, Sarah. You've been here before. Not just, oh, we got an addict on our team. No, Sarah's on my team. I'm a person. If there's anything we know, it's suffering. But because you know suffering, you know how you can heal. It's time for a comeback.
Here we go, Kiki. This is it for our teams. These teams going to end the weekend with a bang. Test six. 15 worm burpees, 15 worm squats, one seated legless row climb each for the women. 10 strict chest to wall handstand push ups, they will switch. There's a long laundry list of things to look after, but these teams are working with that. Burpees, squats, seated legless row climbs, and 10 strict chest to wall handstand push ups. A grueling 16 minute time cap. Josh, this is test number six. We are with heat number one, the final test here for the North America West Noble CrossFit semifinal. These athletes looking to close their competition weekend as high up that leaderboard as possible. Lane number three, CrossFit Lakeville, CFLV. First, back into the ring, but it is close between CrossFit Yukaru and lane number nine, CrossFit SDA Excellence. There goes lane number nine, working on those 10 strict chest-to-wall handstand push-ups. Very impressive from lane number nine as they chip away a nice dismount. Little somersault tuck action there, Kiki. Which one of these teams is gonna get back to the worm right now? Currently lane number nine. Looking to get it done. Two more reps, one more handstand push up to go. Waiting for their teams to switch out already. It looks like lane at number three, Lakeville, taking over first place. Three, Lakeville, looking to get back to the worm first. Lane number four, though. Making moves, Kiki. Lane number four, back to the worm. Lone Star CrossFit. Lone Star CrossFit moving in a groove in on those burpees over the worm. They've got a healthy lead. Looks like they've got company, Josh. I believe that is CrossFit Wildwood. One, Lone Star CrossFit. Two, CrossFit Wildwood. We're looking for our third team to round out this one, two, and three of heat number one, test six. Again, once they finish up these worm burpees and worm squats, it'll be two legless rope climbs, 15 strict handstand push-ups as a lone star picking up that unforgiving worm for those worm squats kiki these teams are in the zone looking real tough Meanwhile, we've got burpees and squats happening. Our leaders charging forward again, Lone Star CrossFit. Lone Star CrossFit all alone into that next round. This is a tough test for our teams to end the weekend. Here come our next set of athletes in lane number eight. 
CrossFit Wildwood. We're five minutes in, over five minutes in. There CrossFit goes. Lakeville. Sorry about that, Josh. CrossFit Lakeville rounding out your top three for this heat. Five minutes and 30 seconds in. Six minutes approaching. These athletes are gonna have 10 minutes as a lane at number eight, Wildwood, finishing up those strict handstand push-ups. Six minutes in, excuse me, six minutes and 15 seconds in here. These athletes have worked all weekend long. This is day three of competition for our teams. This is the final day, final event, final test of fitness. A very tough event for our teams as they chip away. Your current leaders are in lanes one, three, four, and eight. With Lone Star CrossFit getting back to the rig first. There they go, Lone Star CrossFit, your number one team. But Kiki, very interesting, Wildwood, lane eight. Just a few seconds behind him, so it's gonna be a race between these top two teams. It is one Lone Star CrossFit, two is Wildwood. As we hit seven and a half minutes in. Coming up on eight minutes as our leaders look to begin another set of those worm squats. Lone Star and Wildwood working on those squats. Separated by just a few reps. Four more reps to go for Lone Star. One more rep to go for Lone Star and they will advance into that last and final round as we approach nine minutes. Lone Star moves, Wildwood moves, and then in it looks to be lane number three, CrossFit Lakeville. A lot of separation right now between the teams on the competition floor. Crowd getting behind lane number nine. She's been struggling all of that long. She's so close to the top. One more big pull should do it. They are cheering for CrossFit SDA. Team SDA excellence. And she did not give up. That is tremendous. She did not give up, and that is what you want to see, the community getting behind lane number nine, CrossFit SDA. She 
Ava Blue trying to chase down CrossFit Lakeville. CrossFit Lakeville trying to get CrossFit Wildwood. And CrossFit Wildwood trying to chase down your leaders. Lone Star CrossFit. Lone Star and Wildwood looking to finish up here. And STA, that never give up attitude, got them to advance to that next portion. Four and eight. There you go, Eddie. Trying to finish this one with the bang. We got thrusters about ready to happen in lane number one. That's CrossFit Kima Blue. Here comes lane number four, Lone Star CrossFit. They're swapping out right there. Still waiting for Lone Star and Wildwood as we approach the 12 minute mark. Four minutes will remain, but it is Wildwood, Kiki, lane number eight. Their final 15. Lane number eight in the driver's seat to finish this event first, this test first. Wildwood up and over the worm. Wildwood looking to get to those worm squats first. There goes Lone Star, but it might be too little too late as Wildwood chipping away at 15. We are at the 12 and a half minute mark. Less than five reps to go for Wildwood. A little bit of a shuffle up inside that rogue rig, like you're talking about. Wildwood working on, I believe, their final burpee. Here they go with that worm up and onto their shoulders. 15 squats for Wildwood. They are in sync here. Good, solid communication, form, and technique from the athletes in lane number eight. There was a no rep there. Might have cost them a few seconds. Another no rep. 13 minutes in. There it is, judges hand in the air. Two more reps to go. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for lane number eight, CrossFit Wildwood. Lane number four. Hoping to finish this up next, that's Lone Star CrossFit. They've got three more thrusters remaining. Working on that final squat, excuse me, not thruster. And Lone Star CrossFit is done. They have about two minutes remaining. Athletes, you have two minutes. Here come our next set of athletes, lane number three. CrossFit Lakeville. Lakeville trying to get it done. Number three, CrossFit Lakeville. Hoping to finish this underneath the cap. We are 15 minutes in. One minute remains.
CrossFit Lakeville finishes up their burpees. They need some squats. They have 40 seconds. Teams, you have 30 seconds. Can they do it? 20 seconds to go. Two squats remaining for lane number three. CrossFit Lakeville. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, time. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Heat One winners, CrossFit Wildwood. Stand by. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, our teams of heat number two, looking to end the day and the weekend in a 
dramatic fashion this event, this test, if you will. Extremely brutal. As we saw in the last scene, Wildwood put on a fantastic showing. It's all about the first portion of this test. For those seated rope climbs and that strict chest to wall handstand push ups. If you can get past that, it will be a sprint to the finish. There we go, we got about all of the teams working on those worm sprints. Once they finish up those worm squats, like lane number six is, CrossFit Kinesis Black, sprinting those squats, they're making their way back underneath the ring. Well, they will start those seated rope climbs and strict chest to bar, excuse me, chest to wall handstand push-ups. Yep, a little different there with that chest to wall handstand push-up like you were talking about, Joshy G before they switch it out. This event with that 16 minute time cap, plenty of time remains. However, we have seen some teams get caught by that time cap. We'll see how it fares for heat number two, test six, the final event for our teams. Lane number nine, CrossFit City of Lakes. Getting up to the top of the ring. Who's going to change out? Who's going to tag out the quickest? Quickest. It's lane number six, Kinesis Black. They are currently in the lead. Kinesis Black in first. Lane number nine, CrossFit City of Lakes in second. Lane number one swapping out, Coda CrossFit Native. There goes lane two, Kiki. Lane two in the mix. Here we go, lane number six. Getting up and over that worm. Your number one team, lane number six. CrossFit Kinesis Black. Looking strong here in this second heat. Lane number nine trying to get on there, but no, lane two. Kiki takes over second place. Lane number two. CrossFit Fortius. Fortius up and over. We got our one, two, and three on the, that set of burpees. Couple more reps to go for lane number six, and there you go. They're advancing into that next set. Lane number six, Kinesis Black, back to the rig.
Squats happening for our leaders. What a hand in the air at the far end, Josh G. Over in lane number nine, it looks like. CrossFit City of Lakes. A hand in the air for lane number two. CrossFit 40th, but it's City Lakes. CrossFit City of Lakes is one. Then we've got a tie up between lane number two, CrossFit 40th, and Blue City CrossFit Gold. It's a close race between those four teams as we hit six minutes in. Kiki mentioned it, we are at six minutes. The event, the test has a 16 minute time cap. These athletes have less than 10 minutes to go. Six and a half minutes into this test. Which one of these teams right now, Fortius? Trying to chase down Kinesis Black, but Kinesis Black looking unstoppable. They're in the middle of the rig, lane six, working on those strict handstand push-ups. Seven and a half minutes in. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Lane number six still trying to hold on to that lead. The crowd getting behind their favorite teams here. Denise is getting a couple of no reps. Mike Costum, can Fortius take over? Lane number one, Coda CrossFit native with their female pairing on to those legless rope climbs. Their fellas working on those handstand push-ups. Swap out in lane number two, CrossFit 40 as their female athletes are on the handstand push-ups. The guys on the rope climbs now. And it looks like we got ourselves a new number one team. Lane number eight, Blues City CrossFit Gold taking over the lead. Now Kinesis Black got to play catch up. They gave away their lead to Blues City CrossFit Gold. It goes one, Blue City, two, Kinesis Black as we pass the nine minute marker. Blues City CrossFit Gold with the worm on their shoulders. But CrossFit Kinesis Black taking back the lead. While those two athletes working out on the squats, we've got two teams battling it out on the burpees. Lane number two, CrossFit 40th. Lane number nine, CrossFit City of Lakes. One versus two and Three versus four right now. But lane number six.
That's lane number six, Joshi G, CrossFit Kinesis Black. There goes CrossFit, excuse me, Blue City CrossFit Gold and CrossFit Kinesis Black. Blues City nice. trying to take back the lead. Just past the 11 minute mark, 16 minute cap, less than five minutes remaining. Lane number nine, pulling ahead, CrossFit City of Lakes. So we've got our one, two, and three. In lane number two, CrossFit Fortius is in fourth with heat number two. We are at the 12 minute mark. 12 minutes, athletes. Four minutes remaining. Dakota CrossFit native in lane number one, moving into their final round, bringing up that worm to the final station. Will it be Blue City CrossFit Gold or will it be 40th? They have about three minutes remaining in this final test of the weekend. Lumberyard in lane number three. Working on their second set of burpees right here. Meanwhile, our leader, Shashi G, what's going on over there? Oh, uh, lane number eight, Blue City CrossFit Gold taking back the lead. Seesaw battle between 40, or excuse me, between Kinesis Black and Blues City. With about two minutes remaining, can Blues City CrossFit Gold Get this all done and under the cap. Two minutes, athletes, two minutes. They got five more reps to go before picking up that worm and doing some squats, Kiki. Here we go. Blues City CrossFit Gold in the driver's seat. Will they finish with about 90 seconds remaining? Blues City on those squats. Can they get these squats done with about a minute remaining? There goes Kinesis Black with less than a minute. Blues and City CrossFit Gold with two more squats. One more squat, and let's make some noise for your finishers, Blues City CrossFit Gold. Lane number six, CrossFit Kinesis Black. With one more squat, 
And CrossFit Kinesis Black closes it out. Less than 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, time. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to your winners of heat number two, Blue. Two heats remain before we find out the 10 teams that will be moving on from Pasadena and heading to Madison, Wisconsin to compete in the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us today, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with two-time CrossFit Games athlete Jamie Hagia. And Nikki Brazier has us covered down on the competition floor. The overall standings coming into the sixth and final test. The top five teams have all clinched a ticket to Madison. Spots six through 10 are still very much up for grabs. And Ben Lohman CrossFit in 18th place, they are the last team that is mathematically still in the chase. So a lot is riding on this sixth and final test. And Jamie, we're gonna do some warm work and then the reps are going to go up on the gymnastics stuff and the complexity goes down. That's exactly it. These athletes will face one final test starting with 15 warm burpees and 15 warm squats. There'll be a lot of pulling and pressing with rope climbs and handstand push-ups. As you said, we'll see the volume go up and the skill level go down. Well, a lot going on here. What's the recipe for success? The recipe for success is no, no reps. Every single rep is going to be so crucial in these high skill gymnastics. And secondly, go big or go home. you got to play everything on the line to get punch your ticket to Madison. Here are the 10 teams in this third of four heats. And in lanes five and six, undefeated CrossFit and Verdon CrossFit. Those are the first two teams on the outside of the cut line. Undefeated CrossFit is only nine points back of Einhorn CrossFit Ascend. Verdon CrossFit is 15 points out of a qualifying spot. Heat four, or pardon me, heat three, third of four heats is underway. And the score to beat is CrossFit Wildwood at 13 minutes, 19.36 seconds. And we start with the 15 worm burpees, then the 15 worm squats. And that's when the teams will head back 
and start on the gymnastics portion of this test. We'll see these teams settle in. They're going to move at a comfortable, a smooth, but efficient pace, kind of to get the, the blood flowing. And they know that there's a lot of pressing to come to that's going to be following this. So they're going to settle into this pace here. Across an overtake team density, that's Marco Coppola, who is doing these things on his knuckles. And wearing gloves, so I'm assuming for the rope climbs, that's going to help save, maybe give him a little bit more grip, or maybe he has some cuts in with his, on his hands if he doesn't want to tear anymore. Overtake team density was one of the first teams to the worm squads. Cross it complex and cross it condessa Luther MX down in lanes two and lane one. They were the first teams to get started on these 15 worm squats. And Cross the Complex will advance the worm in lane two, and now they will head back for the one seated rope climb and the 10 strict wall facing handstand push ups. I was able to speak to their team, and they said all four of them are living together. So they all coach at their affiliate, they are training together full time, and they hope to be the first team from Mexico to qualify for the CrossFit Games. Each woman has to do one seated legless rope climb while the men do 10 wall facing handstand push ups each. Then they will switch, and round one will be done. These legless rope climbs must be legless on the way up, also on the way down until they come to a seated full position back down on the ground when they start it. In lanes five and six, this is undefeated CrossFit in lane five. These are the two teams that are the first two on the wrong side of the cut line. Top 10 teams go to the CrossFit Games. Verdon CrossFit comes in in 12th, undefeated CrossFit in lane five. They are in 11th. And you couldn't ask for a better race between those two. When you know you're so close, neck and neck, trying to make that last qualifying spot, you get to see your competitors right next to you. 80-35 is in lane seven. They come in in 14th place overall so they're looking up to make some uh, looking to make up some ground here Alyssa Wilhelm and Autumn Flickinger are on the handstand push-ups as Dylan Martin and Kyle Peterson work on their seated rope climbs and that's Dylan Martin making his way up the rope in lane seven for 80 35. And legless rope climbs, these teams have been practicing this for a couple years now, but these wall, chest to wall handstand push ups, this is a more difficult movement because it almost is. I spoke to Duke Van Vliet, a high level gymnastics coach, and he said it's a little bit more of a freestanding, mimicking a freestanding handstand push up. The load is so much more on your shoulders here. That's Mariana Meza on the wall for CrossFit Complex. And now she gets hit with a no rep, and we've seen some teams get hung up here. Now you don't have to do all 10 at once. You can switch between teammates you to break that, this up a little bit. You see that difficult part about this chest to wall handstand push up. You have to start in a wall walk. So you have to start on the ground. So by the time you get up to the wall, you have already fatigued your shoulders a little bit there. And Marley Rittinger in lane five for undefeated cross is having trouble with her handstand push ups. Meanwhile, cross the complex, cross the Carretero in lanes two and three, they're out on their second round. And in lane seven, looks like CrossFit 80-35 as well. Those are your top three teams. Here in heat three, top time, 13 minutes, 19.36 seconds from CrossFit Wildwood back in heat number one. So this is round two, and once again, we start with the 15 worm burpees, the 15 worm squats. Then it's two legless rope climbs each, and then 15 strict handstand push-ups each. Don't have to be wall facing in round two. We're going to see these teams pick up the pace on those worm burpees and those worm squats. They know that the volume is going to go up, but the skill level demand of that is going to go down. So when they get to the back to those gymnastic skills, they're going to get a little bit of a break as your partner goes. Well, undefeated in lane five, they're in big trouble right now. The thing about this test is that you really, it's really dependent on each individual. There's nowhere to hide. Every single individual has to get this work done. So you need to, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And Marley Rittinger is just really having a tough time with those wall facing handstand pushups and undefeated CrossFit 
is in a lot of trouble. Meanwhile, in lanes six and seven, you got Verdon cross on the left, cross at 8035 on the right. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier on the competition floor. Now I caught up with Verdon Crossman just outside of the competition floor in the corrals before this test started and asked them exactly what they needed to do in order to get out of the bubble and into that qualifying spot. At first, the answer was pretty obvious. You know, we got to come out here and win. But at the end of the day, they said the key to this event for them is going to be staying together as a team and having consistent, clear communication. Verdon Crossman back to the wall now. The women will do two legless rope climbs each. The men, 15 strict handstand push-up seats. Then they switch, and that will conclude round two. You're going to see these women get a nice high jump. That's going to cut down the amount of pulls you have to do with your arms. They are allowed to use their legs on the way down on these legless rope climbs, though. Undefeated Crossman in lane five. They are still on round one. And it's just not going to happen for them right now. When it gets to that point, it's just muscle fatigue and muscle failure. There really is nothing you can do except for take rest. Try to wait, especially with that wall walk. It's just going to add an extra amount of, dem of demand on those shoulders. But down in lane one, that's Crossman, Condessa, Luther, MX. They are on... Round number one. They're closing out round two to actually they just started round two. So they are way towards the back here. And they came in the 19th place overall. We're back in lane six is Verdon CrossFit. Again, 12th place. And a strong performance here would really put some pressure on some of the teams in heat four. They're doing exactly what they need to do to put themselves in a qualifying position in that top 10. You see them, these, these are now, instead of wall facing, now these are going to be strict handstand push-ups. A little bit easier, you get to use that balance of your legs against the wall. It's a little bit easier on your shoulders to help press up versus those wall, chest to wall handstand push-ups. Hannah Frakes working on her handstand push-ups is lane two across the complex, 17th place overall. Still mathematically alive here. Nikki talked about teamwork here, and as much as this is an individual, every single individual needs to do their gymnastics piece, this is where they come together. You have to be in sync. You have to make sure that you're moving over that worm, jumping over at the same time. Your chest and thighs touch the ground at the same time on those burpees. And lane seven cross at 80-35. They're getting back to the worm now to start round three. Cross the complex there at the bottom of your screen. They lead this heat. Their best finish was a tie for fifth, was complex in test number two, was 80-35 in lane seven. You know, 14th place overall here. And meanwhile, Verdant CrossFit now, they're starting to struggle. It really is just going to be a point of muscle failure for these. So for some of these women, upper body pressing is going to be a little bit difficult. So they really have to make sure they're ready to go because a no rep is so costly and takes so much out of you. Across it overtake team density. Meanwhile, this could absolutely be helping them because they are in the top three in this test right now. They came in in 13th place overall. I spoke with Marco Coppola, and he said him and his teammate Casey are both expecting a baby soon later this year. So training is uh, has to tighten up just a little bit because they're going to be a little short on time in a little in, in a little bit here. Crossfit Complex in lane two, left side of your screen. They are your leaders right now. Having no problem with those handstand push-ups. Now we can use this kip. You're going to bring your knees down to your chest, load, get that big hip pop to help you press out for that top of the lockout of your handstand push-up. Three rope climbs each and 20 handstand push-up seats, and obviously you are able to kip those 20. As now 80-35 is going back to start round three. This is where it's really fun. With the worm and all these lanes, you're able to see where everyone else is, what you need to do to make up some time, how fast you need to go. The 
across the complex the pair of Ricardo Garcia and Christian Pacheco are now done with their handstand push ups and they will wait on Carla Coneo Placencia and Marina Mesa to finish their rope climbs. They were so excited to be here and they are so proud to represent Queretaro. Across at 80 35 in lane seven second place in this heat right now. And still alive for a spot inside the top 10. That's Autumn Flickinger on the rope climbs for 80 35. Alyssa Wilhelm is taking a break there on the left side. And at this stage, three rope climbs with your legs, no problem for these men or women. Now Alyssa Wilhelm will start her set of 20 handstand push-ups as Kyle Peterson and Dylan Martin work on their three rope climbs. Looks like the men are getting up there in about two pulls. He gets a big jump up, wraps his feet around that rope. Really, one pull. The CrossFit complex is off the wall. Now they have 15 burpees and 15 worm squats to close out this test. They got hit with a no rep early on. Now the time to beat again is 13, 19.36 seconds, and CrossFit complex is. They're has a chance here. You see them getting no repped in the very back. She's lifting up her chest before all four of their teammates chest is on the ground. That's where they're getting hit with no reps on those warm burpees. So as you mentioned, you know, one of the keys are no, no reps. And if this gets into a close race with Wildwood for that top time, you're going to be thinking back to those here on the worm. On the right is lane seven. That's cross at 80 35 lane six is Verdant CrossFit, Verdant in 12th, and they are now on to round three here with those handstand push ups and three regular rope climbs. The complex on the left is trying to keep themselves alive here and maybe pocket 100 points. It doesn't look like that's going to happen as now they got hit with a, another no rep. So Wildwood looks like they're going to hang on to the top time. That mental fatigue, too. You are exhausted. Your body is hurting. You have to make sure you mentally focus to get every single rep and make every single one of these count. Well, down to lane 7, 80, 35. They are on to their final set of worm burpees. As we have just two teams here in the final portion of this test. The 13 19 is the top score. Now, Complex with a good pace here. This is going to be close. Final rep, and they're not going to be able to chase down. Wildwood so think back to the handful of no reps they got here on this final set and that's the difference exactly John Wooden says be quick but don't hurry and that's exactly what this means you have to move quickly but when you hurry you make mental mistakes there and that ended up being very costly for them 80 35 is looking to finish in third place now as complex is going to slide into second in this test that would be good for 97 points or make that boy yes 97 points for second place as 80 35 has 15 squats to go and now overtake team density they're off the wall and they have 30 reps remaining and these final 15 worm burpees and worm squats, it is just how much can you hurt? How much can you dig into that pain cave? Shut your brain off, just move. You know this is the final test of the weekend. The final rep for 80-35, they are done. They are across. And they will finish right now fourth place in the test with 14 minutes, 31.45 seconds. That would be good for 91 points for them. Now overtake team density looking to be the next team to finish here. This is their final rep on the burpees and they will now start their 15 worm squats with now a minute to go before we hit the time cap. Two teams so far in this heat have finished. This, for the viewers at home, this worm is going to be 365 pounds. It's 170, 170 with three six-pound spacer bags and that cover overall making it 365 pounds total. 
Handful of reps left for overtake team density, and they will get in. With about 35 seconds to fare, 15.26.40 seconds. Right now, that would be good enough for sixth place. And the two teams in 11th and 12th, undefeated CrossFit, they're essentially done because they didn't get out of the first round. And now, Verdant CrossFit in lane six is in. They're going to take ninth place right now in the test which would give them, if it stands, 76 points. Just an absolute great way to end this test, this final test for all these teams. Well, CrossFit Complex are doing all they can. They're going to take a second place finish in this test into the final heat. And we'll see if that might be able to get them into the top 10. They had a lot of ground to make up. But think back to last year and Will Morad, who was essentially not even factored in when it came to who could qualify, and all of a sudden found himself in the top five. But this was pretty much the end for undefeated. They could not get through these wall facing handstand push-ups. It just is a t difficult thing. It's have you trained them in the offseason or have you not? You really have to focus on that. Tons of things you can do to help build that if they weren't it to make it this year and then try to make it back next year. Well, 80 35, they are trying to keep themselves alive. They were 14th place overall coming into this test. They wind up finishing in fourth in the in this test right now. But Boston Complex, they're going to lock up 97 points if they stay in second. And, 80-35 got across, but that may not be enough for them. 13.22.60 the seconds is the second best time that we have seen so far. 80-35 will finish second in the heat. Right now, fourth place in the test, followed by Overtake Team Density and then Verdant CrossFit. We are down to the final heat for the teams as they close out test number six here at the North America West semifinal. And we will find out who will be heading from Pasadena to Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with two-time CrossFit Games athlete Jamie Hagia. And we have Nikki Brazier down there on the competition floor. The overall standings coming in. The top five teams have clinched. Spot six through ten, they still have some work to do. But that may have changed because of what just happened in heat number three. Einhorn cross to descend right now, the last team in with 329 points. And the two teams that were right behind them did not do what they needed to do to put a decent amount of pressure on Einhorn coming in to this final heat. Jamie, this one, as we saw in the prior heat, if you got the gymnastic skills, you can do pretty well. If not, you're going to have a bad time. You either have it or you're going to be watching the CrossFit Games from home. This final test is going to have these teams coming out doing 15 worm burpees and 15 worm squats. It's going to be followed with a bunch of pulling and pressing with rope climbs and handstand push-ups. The volume will go up, the skill level will go down. Recipe for success. No, no reps. We saw in that heat right before, those were costly. You have to make sure you focus on every single rep to make them count. And it's go big or go home. You're either going to the games or you will be watching with all of us. The 10 teams here in this fourth and final heat. And these are the teams coming in that were in the top 10 in the overall standings. Half of them have already clinched. One of those is CrossFit Omnia. Second place overall. They have yet to finish lower than sixth. Meanwhile, CrossFit Invictus, they look like they have wrapped the whole thing up, but still a little bit of work to do for them. And for more on that team, here's Nikki Brazier. Yep, unfortunately, as you can see in the front there, Jorge is dealing with a little bit of a hamstring injury and did not feel particularly good yesterday, so he didn't participate in any of the heavy cleans that we saw in the earlier test, but that Invictus team still believes that they're able to complete this. They're actually out here to win this test, regardless of the fact that they're in first place. They want to take it all home. 
Crossfit Invictus in first place with 461 points in lane 10. That's Einhorn Crossfit Ascent. Now they, they would be the last team in with 329 points. An undefeated Crossfit. They're out of the picture. Verdon, they still have a pulse, but they're going to need a lot of help here. Einhorn's going to have to fall apart here in this heat. We're looking at these athletes. They look like they're going to settle into this nice space, but they are moving quickly because at this rate, everyone's going to have about the high, the same level of high skill gymnastics. So this worm is going to be a separator in this test for all these teams here. The CrossFit Franco's misfits in lane four. Now they have four reps remaining in lane five. Invictus, they're the first to advance the worm. And in lane six, Omnia, one of the teams that has clinched a spot. Advancing the worm, there go the Misfits. And then in lane nine, Invictus Sea of Green and Einhorn ascend all towards the front here. Yep. And now it's the one seated rope climb for each female athlete. And then the 10 strict chest to wall handstand push ups for the men. Then they will switch. These athletes do have to do that legless rope climb, legless on the way up as well as on the way down. Now they will switch will Invictus, Jorge Fernandez and Joshua Alchama. They will move to the rope climbs. And it's Devin Kim and Brittany Weiss on the handstand push-ups. Sean, we've talked a lot about Invictus and CrossFit Franco's Misfits, but Omnia is sitting in second place. They finished seventh place at the games last year, and they're returning three out of their four team members, adding an incredible athlete in Kelly Stone. I caught up with them earlier, and they said they came here to win the whole thing this weekend. So they're going to be giving everyone a run for their money in that top podium spot. And they haven't made a lot of noise as far as a test win is concerned. But as I mentioned, they have yet to finish lower than six and they have two second place finishes as well. They've been extremely impressive over these past three days. Now Invictus and Omnia will be the first two to start round two. And here come Franco's misfits. And we'll see here the teamwork, who has been training together, who knows each other well, who knows when we're going to have to slow down the pace just a second to wait for one of our team members. But if you can, they're going to try to push that, push that pace. Invictus Sea of Green, they are onto the worm. And here comes Einhorn CrossFit Ascend, just hanging out where they need to right now because a lot of the pressure is off because of what happened in that prior heat. Now, this is down in lane number one. This is CrossFit Believe in ninth place. Now they are certainly not safe either. They're starting to run into some troubles here on the wall facing handstand push ups. The seated legless rope climbs not a problem. These wall chest to wall handstand push ups are going to be a little bit more difficult. Speaking with Duke Van Vliet, a high level gymnastics coach, he said this is more of a freestanding handstand push up with a lot of that weight on your shoulders. Well, Shelby Jones and Lauren Olson are struggling here. They're taking some time to talk things over. And they are falling towards the back of this pack. So remember, CrossFit Complex, they finished second right now in the test, although that looks like that score is going to drop significantly given what we're watching here right now. But Believe needs to be cognizant of that. As now Invictus is on their strict handstand push-up. Joshua Alchama going through those. Women in the back are going to be doing these legless rope climbs. You can get a big jump up there. It's going to be two of those. Invictus, you can use your legs on the way down. Invictus Sea of Green starting now round two. As Invictus is on the cusp of sending three teams to the CrossFit Games. Just incredible. CrossFit Mayhem was able to do that last year, but Invictus has a great qualifying chance of having all of these athletes do well at the CrossFit Games, making the top ten. Einhorn CrossFit Ascend in lane 10. Sierra Cole and Abby Fletcher on the rope. Zach Carroll Ramirez and Casey Viad are on the wall for that team. Coming in in 10th place overall. And although these are strict handstand push-ups, the normal way we're used to doing these, the fatigue is building up from those burpee worm push-ups, uh, uh, burpees over the worm, as well as all of the handstand push-ups they did in the earlier round.
Viador and Zachary Ramirez making the switch with Fletcher and Sierra Cole there for Einhorn to send, looking to hang on to a qualifying spot. Now finally down, down in lane one, cross it believe. They just started round two here. Along with the Rhino Dogs. They are the Rhino Dogs there on the left side, judge's hand in the air. But there's a great battle going on right in the middle of the floor between Invictus, Franco's Misfits, and Omnia. This is going to be a close race, Sean. They are all neck and neck, right next to each other. You know exactly where everyone is at. Who is going to push that pace? Who's willing to go where to where it hurts to risk it all to try to take the test win? Invictus is done first with their burpees right next to them. Omnia picking up the worm here. Invictus gets right to work, as does Omnia practically squat cleaning that thing off the ground. That's it. you got to pick it up, drop straight to the bottom of your squat, get those squats going down and up at a nice pace, hit the bottom all together, pop back up, and you got to get back to your third and final round of gymnastics work. The cadence and the speed of those squats from Invictus. Just a little bit quicker than Franco's Misfits and Omnia. We'll see what happens when we get into this third round. We see Jorge Fernandez kind of walking back slowly. But because Josh can do those, he's up for those handstand push-ups first, Jorge's going to get a little bit of a break. Einhorn CrossFit ascend there in lane 10. Right where they need to be here in this heat. As in lane 9, CrossFit Invictus Sia Green. Looking to close out round number 2. Now the teams in the prior heat are all still out on the floor watching. That's overtake team density. And they must be watching on these sidelines, just praying that they did enough to make it into that top 10. And they're all, those teams that are still out there on the floor, are all about 10 feet away from Einhorn Cross of the Send, the team that they hope punts this one into the stands. But right now, that's not happening. Well, this is the battle for first place here in this test between Franco's Misfits, Invictus, and Omnia. The battle for first in this test and also for the podium spot to take the whole entire weekend over six tests. It was Jorge Fernandez for Invictus. Glad to see his hamstring holding up here. 20 handstand push-ups that each teammate needs to complete. Then it's back to the worm for 15 final burpees and 15 squats. I spoke with Alexis Johnson before this test, and she said those were the 20. Those 20 handstand push-ups were some of the hardest of her entire life, and she's a former gymnast. Well, Franco's Misfits have now taken the lead. Here comes Omnia in second. This is going to be a great race. We see how low they're staying when they jump over that worm. They're going to pop up, stay nice and low, so and get back down to the ground. Well, Omni has got to beat Invictus by two spots if they want a chance of taking the top spot on the podium, because Invictus will have the tie break. But Franco's Misfits almost done here with their burpees, and Omni now in their final five. Here comes Invictus to join them. Franco's Misfits, 15 worm squats, and they are going to absolutely smash that top time. Alexis also said that this was their favorite test of out, out of all six of them. She was looking, their whole entire team was looking forward to this one most. 
Franco's Misfits, they have already won two tests. They took test two and test three, and they're looking to pock pocket their third win here, and we will see the Misfits in Madison, Wisconsin. Test win to close things out here at the North America West semifinal. And now Omnia is going to come across. But again, they needed to get someone between themselves and that team in order to take the entire thing here. And we may actually have a three-way tie in points between the Misfits, Invictus, and Omnia. And the Misfits have won three tests. That could be the tie break that puts them on top of the podium. But we'll have to wait how this all sorts out. Across it, believe in lane one. They are really struggling. And remember, there are some teams out there that could possibly catch them, depending on what happens here. But they have a lot of time left to get a decent result here in this test. Top of the screen, Einhorn Cross with Ascend, Cross and Invictus Sia Green, and Coda Cross at Redemption, all trying to get across the finish line. And then the bottom, that's the Rhino Cross with Dogs. They still have another round to go here. Cross with Redemption, and I don't cross with Ascent. Working on their worm squats in the middle. It's Invictus Sia Green. These were the standings coming in. Cross and Believe in a little bit of trouble here. So that could get interesting. These final worm squats, this is where you have to make it hurt. Push, because you know these are. this is it to the end of your weekend. Redemption is in. Einhorn is in. And looking like they're going to head to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And Invictus Sia Green might want to start making some travel arrangements as well as they are done. All of CrossFit Invictus, their whole entire affiliate will be there. Top six teams in this heat have the top six times so far in this test. This is Kilo 2 in lane 7. They were fourth place overall coming in. They had already clinched a spot. Again, the top five coming in had already clinched. And they're coming off of a 25th, of 25th place finish at the games last year, and they have this three out of their four members back from that last year's team. The Rhino CrossFit Dogs are now to the worm for the final time. Now in lane three, here comes Cross and Invictus Unconquerable. They were fifth place overall, so they are safe, despite the fact that they are towards the back of the pack here in this final heat. Now Kilo 2, looking to get across the finish line and wrap up their semifinal. They have three reps remaining. And now they are in. Lanes two and three, that's where the Rhino Crossed Dogs and Invictus Unconquerable are working. Rhino Crossed Dogs now hoisting up the worm. They have a strong 15 athlete squats. in Christine Middleton. I talked to Raph before this, and he said that she lifted in those cleans before one less rep than him and his teammate combined, the males on the team. Final couple reps for the Rhino Cross with Dogs, and they are done. And there are the teams that are trying to see what happens on the right is 80-35. They might still be alive here because remember, down in lane two, the or pardon me, lane one, Cross it believe they're still working, and we have a minute left to go. Well, Invictus Unconquerable, they're going to take 13th in this test. Well, the last 
The CrossFit Complex has now slid to eighth place in the test. And 80-35 is down to 11th. So Complex will earn 79 points, and 80-35 will earn 70. And what we're looking at here is just the accumulation of fatigue in the shoulders. She has to shake it out for a second from all the worm burpees, all the gymnastics work before that. It is just completely, your shoulders are so tired, so fatigued, and feels like there's nothing left in the tank. 80-35 trail cross it, believe, by 60 points. Believe is going to get capped. And now we'll have to sort this out. And that would be good. We'll have to wait to see how many reps they were able to get. Right now they're listed at 39th in the test. As we take a look at the replay, but. CrossFit Believe was Wait. really struggling on these handstand push-ups, the chest-to-wall handstand push-ups. Meanwhile, Omnia, Invictus, and CrossFit Franco's Misfits all got to the worm at the same exact time. It just came down to Cadence, who can get over that worm a little bit quicker than the other team. But it was CrossFit Franco's that was able to get all those 15 worm burpees and worm squats done, cross that line with their favorite test of the weekend. Redemption was finishing it with a quick finish there as well to join them and end their three days of competition here at these semifinals. Well, here are your test results. Franco's Misfits going to pick up the win. That's a third of the competition, followed by Omnia and Invictus. Across the complex, they were way back. They take eighth place. Doesn't look like that's going to be enough, but keep Verdant CrossFit in mind, they might have an outside shot. There are a lot, there's a lot that needs to be sorted out because the fact that CrossFit Believe struggled in that last heat kept the door open for some of these teams. This is what you never know. Never count yourself out because you can only control yourself and your team's ability. You don't know what everyone else is capable of and you don't know where they're gonna end up. So you just have to go out there, do the best you can, stick to your game team plan and hope and pray that you did enough to make it to that qualifying spot. Let's send it down on the competition floor with Nikki Brazier. We are obviously still waiting on all of the final results here, but let's talk about this last test. Exactly what did you guys have to do in order to maintain this sort of team consistency to stay ahead? Well, um, we had a, a little case of tiny heart syndrome earlier in the weekend, okay. but we beat it. And now looking back on everything that you've been through over the entire weekend, what were, what were some of the highs for you and this team? Uh, I think just getting together. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of time to spend together before we got here. Okay. It's mainly open quarterfinals. So, you know, getting on the big floor and kind of seeing, you know, what we were made of. Uh, we had a couple of slip ups, but um, just to be able to come back from those and um, capitalize when we needed to is, is huge. And it speaks to hopefully the rest of the season as we as we progress. Well, so that can be difficult if you didn't have a ton of time together. I mean, there's so much that goes into seeing a top team that isn't exactly related to fitness. It's communication. It's dynamic. How do you manage that? Um, our training weekends, we stay together, we cook together, we clean together. We literally do everything together. And um, last year I was on a team and we all lived in the same area, but we didn't have that unity outside of the gym. Um, so when we do get together, we have that unity outside of the gym. And I think that goes just as far as training together. It's just as important as what you're doing in the gym. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. Well, no Bull will be putting up athlete jerseys Sunday evening of each semifinal with the athletes that have qualified for the games. Go order yours now and support your favorite athlete. Well, we're going to figure everything out here. We're going to take a break. When we return, we'll be back to wrap it up and find out what 10 teams are heading to the 2023 No Bull CrossFit Games. health and fitness in a way that isn't just something that's a passing interest when you're young. I think that's super powerful. I think it's really, really, really cool. And it's really important that um, people can look to that and say, hey, you know what, that could be me. 
The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. I use this analogy all the time. You have, you have a 100 meter dash. It's super compelling and super exciting, but nobody's concerned about the athletes making the distance. The challenge of the test on its face is not what makes it interesting. It is the intensity and the effort and the application that the athletes bring to it that makes it compelling. And I think that should be true for most of the events at the games. You gotta go fast and you gotta look heavy if you want to get yourself into contention for that podium position. And come, it's absolutely necessary at some times to put out a test that's a little bit beyond where the current field is and, and have them reach for that. But it shouldn't be all the time. The intensity and the effort that the athletes bring to the test is the test. The CrossFit Games are the answer to who is the fittest person on earth. And that applies to both the men, the women, age group divisions, teenagers, teams, adaptive athletes. But for any person, the CrossFit Games are the place you find out how fit you are. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they were good at and they showed up the environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person's good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit, it's constantly very functional, it's executed at high intensity, this thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that the community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games.
Welcome to the post game show presented by Go One. We are set to announce the 10 teams that will be heading to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and we think it is going to be very close. So, for the official announcement, let's go down to the competition floor. Here's Kiki Dixon. these teams are first off congratulations to all the teams who fought hard this weekend we are gonna start first with third second and first I've got to say there was a three-way tie these three teams all had 555 points so it came down to event finishes Taking third with 555 points, CrossFit Omnia. In second, also with 555 points, it's CrossFit Invictus. That leaves your top team, your number one for the North America West Noble CrossFit semifinal with 555 points, CrossFit Franco's Misfits! <laughs> and now, for fourth place with 528 points, CrossFit Kilo 2! In fifth, with 486 points, put your hands together for Coda CrossFit Redemption! In sixth, with 483 points, CrossFit Invictus Unconquerable! In seventh, with 444 points, Rhino CrossFit Dogs! In eighth, with 432 points, CrossFit Invictus Sea of Green! Invictus sending not one, but two, three teams. In ninth, with 417 points. Einhorn CrossFit Ascend! <laughs> And for our last and final spot, 10th and 11th were separated by just one point. Cuts deep, I know. In 10th, with 364 points. Cross it, believe! It's going to be Cross it, believe! Einhorn CrossFit Ascend, CrossFit Invictus Sea of Green, Rhino CrossFit Dogs, CrossFit Invictus Unconquerable, Coda CrossFit Redemption. 
Nation, CrossFit Kilo, CrossFit Omnia, CrossFit Invictus, CrossFit Franco's Misfits, we will see you in Madison, Wisconsin for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. You're gonna wanna stick around for the official award ceremony happening. The official award ceremony happening next. Thanks guys. One point gets CrossFit Believe into the games and you saw that just the look of absolute relief on Lauren Olson's face and Shelby Jones as well. They got stuck on the handstand push-ups, but they were able to get enough reps done in order to keep themselves inside the top 10. We had a three-way tie for first and because of those three test wins, the Franco's Misfits take the top spot on the podium. Einhorn cross for the send. They kept themselves inside the top 10 as well, as did, once again, Cross it Believe with 364 points. Verdant needed to make up 30, and they got 29. 80-35. They finished in 12th place. Congratulations to all the teams heading to the CrossFit Games. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazer, who's with the team that will stand atop the podium, CrossFit Franco's Misfits. It's nice to see you guys again. Congratulations on the top spot. I have to know at this point, how does it set your mindset going into games, coming off of that top podium position? You know, it definitely feels good to come out on top of this, but this is just one stepping stone to get to the games. We've got a lot of work to do as a team. I think we all have some more things that we're going to take back in the gym and work on ourselves. But, I mean, you have to celebrate. Absolutely. Do you get a little bit of rest? I mean, what does the time look like between now and Madison? I mean, it's quick turnaround. We only got two months until the games. And so, I mean, we get maybe a week to enjoy the win and then it's back to work. Back to work. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much. Great job this weekend. Congratulations to Franco's Misfits for taking the win. That's overtake team density. And, and it's, this is the part where you just you're so happy for some people and your heart breaks for others. Here's your rogue don't weaken moment of the day. And it's Cross and Believe finding out that they are it's going advancing to, be and to Madison, Wisconsin in the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. You're going to want to stick around for the official award ceremony. Now let's happening. go back down to Nikki Brazier who is with the last oh team in. You okay? We're yeah. still recovering down here. This is an emotional moment. I know that it must have just been so incredibly nerve wracking waiting to figure out who was in that 10th place spot. So tell me what's going through your mind right now. I personally am obviously ecstatic, but I'm so heartbroken because that was my last year's team, uh, three of four of the members. So this was kind of, this was heartbreaking for me as much as it was very exciting. So that was really hard, but obviously we're really excited. Can you explain a little bit about all the different emotions that kind of go through your entire team over the course of the weekend? Because CrossFit is, of course, the most physically demanding sport, but also mentally yeah. demanding. Yeah, for sure. Um, as Josh explained earlier, we have a lot of strengths that really stand out, but we also have big holes. Um, so that's what we're going to use these next few months for is to cover that ground of our holes because that's mentally taxing as much as it is physically like this event just did to us. So we'll be working on that. So a lot of work to come, but is there any sort of break or celebration between now and then? I'm going to eat in and out a lot of that. But yeah, that's really the biggest celebration and our family back home and our friends at CrossFit Believe. Um, we're really excited to get back home with you guys to celebrate. Well, congratulations. Thank we will you see you guys in Madison. Thank you. Thank you. You can maximize your CrossFit performance with GoWad's tailor-made mobility program. You can try it now with a 14-day free trial by scanning the QR code on your screen. Ten teams moving from Pasadena to Madison, Wisconsin, and we certainly had some drama there in the final test. Action is not done here. One day remains. Tomorrow, we find out what individuals will move on to the CrossFit Games. It should be a lot of fun. We will see we you back here in Pasadena on Sunday. For the 